Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hola. Greetings. Okay. Huh. Hi, my name is uh, Tolu. Welcome. Welcome here to the, uh, this is here. August 13th, the third episode of the podcast. Doesn't have a name yet. The podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, we gotta come up with a name. Yeah, exactly. Eventually, eventually. But <laughs> here we are. Uh, I'm joined today by two esteemed gentlemen, two interesting individuals. Um, who are you know known in the worlds of both coffee, and cooking, for for different things, which we will hopefully be able to and like uh, enlighten ourselves on the topic of. But I'm joined by uh, Josh and Caleb Nolan. Everybody, what's up? What's up? <laughs> I'm Josh. That's Caleb. We're twins. <laughs> Together they make the twins. The twins. It's like it's kind of it's kind of crazy. Just like two two people who are just like twins. Which is like these are probably the most fraternal. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's he's uh he's Danny DeVito. <laughs> so it goes oh, like that. I don't think he likes. Them. I I think um, but it's like it's cool because you know it's just two dudes who both like somehow in the, like the culinary space in different ways. They and they both do some pretty cool stuff with that. So um, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. So yeah. What do you guys? What do you guys do? What are you? What are your your passions? So. I guess we're we're flavor guys, but you I'm in the, answer, answer I, for I, yourself. Answer for yourself. All right, guys, come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm the cool one here out of the out of the two. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Kidding. He's got me out of me. You know, I'm not cool. At all. I'm super <laughs> but, uncool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I would say are both just nerding out about flavors stuff and having a good time and i'm sort of in the beverage department here. bring the, the, the mic a little world. bit closer uh-huh. like on this side just talk about yourself okay all right well <laughs> good, i, I work good. in coffee basically okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay so you're, you're and, a coffee dude uh, i'm a taster. coffee dude yeah um i'm a taste tester basically okay. like a coffee like a sommelier for wine but for yeah. coffee the sommelier for wine but coffee yeah all right that's sick yeah so Okay. Are you there know. sommeliers for so- other things? You know, there's experts <laughs> in different food Wait. things. Oh no! Pop my computer. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, okay, no. okay, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Battery's low. I'll guys. be right back. <laughs> You'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. it makes sense. You're just like always looking. Plugged in. <laughs> like one, one, one viewer leaves, and you're like, "Damn, bro, was it me? Did I say something wrong?" Like, yeah, you did, but you're gonna to dwell on that yeah. but um okay yeah so if you i think the best thing to do is hold the mic oh. i think it's actually on the okay. side yeah yeah, yeah. Perfect, the, like this. excellent excellent and yeah. then try to keep it out of the orange but it's hard for me okay. a lot of the time uh, which one am i you're the middle one right sweet turn my shit down a little bit okay so then we got we got our dude over here we got caleb bro what do you do what's your thing i uh cook i work in fine dining i cook too Basic. much and uh we should I, be cooking on twitch yeah I, I was gonna say when i have the time i i stream cook on twitch uh maybe some other platforms too that uh my username is uh chef underscore bigs with two f's yeah. it used to be Schmeep, which was sick but oh yeah I, Schmeep, I, was, I forgot about but, that yeah, but but chef on is it chef underscore bigs yeah okay cool. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a link in the description below so you'll be able to be able to hang uh see that so okay so we got we got we got the boys okay I, what i would like to know first is i want to know the origin of how you guys both got into the things you did so like you can tell us about your your introduction because i don't think i even know honestly okay i met you as a coffee man already uh-huh. and you also i don't see. know like how does somebody get into cooking like that so. so honestly my my path was uh the internet um kids these days yeah well basically we were homeschooled and uh lame no, I'm just... <laughs> um, <laughs> losers losers yeah we um i pretty much what that means is i spent all of high school watching youtube videos yeah. not learning anything but i was just on the internet watching youtube videos as one does i mean as i did the does, same thing just you know. none of it was productive that's <laughs> but i mean i wouldn't say mine was exactly productive but I wanted to do filmmaking at first, and so I, I never wanted to go to college. So then in high school, I was, like, kind of figuring out, what a, okay, what am I going to do after high school? <laughs> but I knew I wasn't going to go to college. Then I just 
ended up in these coffee circles on the internet through like YouTube pretty much. <laughs> and I started mean? nerding out about like oh, coffee, coffee, you know, and there's a, there's a certain, there's some YouTubers and stuff. You know, James Hoffman's the name, the biggest name. James is the, the biggest James, coffee yeah, man. The biggest, bi- biggest internet coffee guy. But there's Very like forums and stuff that I would like go on and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a hobby at first. But then I got a parking ticket when I was like 18, didn't have a yeah. job. And I figured I need to pay this off. So I should probably get a job. Wait, I didn't know you got a job because you got a parking yeah. ticket. <laughs> Well, I was dating hilarious. this girl at the time. She was like, "Oh, you have to get a job, blah blah blah. You can't do filmmaking right now, so you have to go, go do something yeah. else." And then um, I was hilarious. like, "Well, I like coffee, so I guess I'll work in a coffee, a coffee shop. shop." That's fair. So I went to work in a coffee shop, and then when I started working there, I was like, "Oh, damn! I I sick. guess I know more than the average person about coffee." About coffee, word. And then over like a year, kind of just dug into that, read a lot of books and stuff. And then I went to, I was like, I I figure I I should like dive deeper. So I went to, there was the, the international coffee expo was happening in Boston at the time. Oh, And so I was like, all right, I guess I'll pull up. There's a special little thing. There's like $2,000 extra dollars since I lived in Boston or I had friends in Boston. I could just stay crash and like go to the conference. So I went. Ended up being the youngest like guy to By go like to this conference five thing years or something in the history of this thing ever. Oh really? That's, that's crazy. All these, I mean, I didn't know anything. I right. was just, you're, I just pulled just up. Chilling. I was just like, I guess I'll see what this is about. It ended up like the thing that I went to is like the deepest of the deep you can get to in coffee. Like I just took the plunge accidentally into like the super deep like right because that's like everybody is there. Yeah, and that's not just the yes, coffee. but <laughs> it's like all the people at the, the top head honchos level. yeah yeah so so then I, when i was there some south african i met some south africans they like invited me to south africa they like gave me a whole coffee experience and education basically while i was there oh really Wait, how so long you were you just, there just a month okay but you, they were just like you just said oh yeah, i'm pretty interested in coffee and like yo you just want to live on our farm well i was already <laughs> interested and right. I, I asked them i said can i like work for you guys or something <laughs> so like sick. we can set you up with a work experience but we can't like pay you or anything because right 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 we don't have, South yeah, we don't have money for so that <laughs> what you thought i was like I, I'm, I'll, I'll just live there like right right, that's right good enough so that's what i did and then I came back from that and I really, one of my friends there was a, like a taste tester and that's when I really like learned about the taste testing mm. or Q grading is what it's called. Interesting. And then came back to the U S and got like a serious job at a coffee shop that the, our current I'm yeah, I'm a barista technically, but it's at Ooh. a very nice coffee roastery. So right, I right, do right. a lot more than just like being a barista basically. Okay. And then from there I went to, be doing coffee judging things in yeah, other yeah. countries okay, and yeah. stuff. We'll, what we'll, what we'll countries? Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll get to that before. <laughs> but that's a whole. That's a rabbit whole, hole. So whole, yes. So before we get to that, I'd like to uh, to get let's let's understand a little bit about yeah. How did you get into cooking? What was it that that got you into that? I mean, uh, a little preface, I guess, before I start is um, me and Josh are from a very big family, unusually Yo, big family, <laughs> ridiculously large, a little small. Uh. Yeah, they're not the size of a country, but maybe a, a reasonably sized village. Like 10 yes. plus kids size family. And um, so growing up, our family, my mom would just like make uh, meals, like huge meals from scratch because it was way cheaper, obviously, right. to do it that way. And she would like butcher whole chickens and like make stock and like make Dang. mayonnaise. and just, That's really cool. She just did like everything you know from we scratch. Had, you know, we had all that mayonnaise yeah yeah that, yeah, was, yeah. that was the number one yeah. thing. The occasion there. yeah yes. you got it you got to yes. have mayonnaise we got to represent white truly an uh, all-american uh, you know i'm surprised you guys aren't mormon but <laughs> <laughs> the only thing i was surprised yeah, i used yeah. to call me mormon at my old job but yeah. um <laughs> yeah i just have 35 siblings <laughs> homeschooled yeah, literally like <laughs> what's left bro <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah okay, so, so we have a lot of siblings. So our mom would make like everything from scratch, so you, and she was you, you really were good. So I would help her cook, and then also like part of it too was just like she was too busy. Like I mean, we were homeschooled, and all our siblings were too. So she was too busy like teaching kids or doing other stuff to like cook for us constantly. So I was like, I'm I'm impatient. I'm just gonna learn how to cook myself. So at a young age, I started cooking. 
and uh, I, I love to experiment in. I used to like make ice cream flavors and make new sodas and ferment really? things. I remember one time I made Did like you just ferment stuff. Yeah, I remember one time I, I made soda and then forgot about it. And then one day, like <laughs> half a year later, we heard like an explosion. We were like, what is that? <laughs> what? And we go outside and like the soda I left outside and it was in like a, a plastic jug. It literally exploded. The, hey, the top you went made a bomb. Like, flying. Yeah, you just made like a carbonated <laughs> bomb. Like, so it was just made out of like, you just, well, was it a flavor of soda? Yeah, I think it was that the one that exploded was some sort of ginger ale it was probably gotcha. like ginger and apple or something like that gotcha. um yeah there was and one then... time he tried making root beer but he used a weed oh, instead of the i thought the right I, was, I needed to use mint what? and my mom had a bunch of mint growing outside and i yeah, went outside yeah, to yeah. find it and i i was like in a hurry okay and um there was another plant that looked like mint and i thought it was mint I tasted it too, and I don't know. Maybe I was just cooked or something. But <laughs> oh, interesting. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> it was not mint. It was so bitter. I think it uh, honestly might have been like gentian root or something. It was like the most bitter thing ever, and it ruined the root beer. But anyways, I used to, I used to think when I was like a kid, like I uh, on our like like elementary school playground, they used to have like mad rhubarb everywhere. I used to think <laughs> rhubarb because it smells like root beer or something uh-huh. like that, and I would like try to put it in water and see if it was gonna <laughs> turn into root beer. It did not do that. No, it did not. Not Bitter unfortunately water. not. Yeah, not the best. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, um, so then I actually was going to be an EMT at first, and I did school. And then I needed a car to get a job because uh, they were all like a half hour away. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to get a job to buy a car. So I worked at um, a, a place, and I ended up liking that way more. I just was like, ah, screw EMT shit. I'm just going to fucking cook <laughs> yeah. and uh, let him cook, <laughs> let him cook. <laughs> let him cook. yeah right, i've been, been cooking a... ever since he's been in, and, he's been uh, in the kitchen uh, chefing it up yeah. yeah now i uh work full-time in a fine dining restaurant cooking and i stream and it's fun that's sick okay nice okay so um that's pretty cool so like um i don't know i'm, I'm curious to know like what is what is your aspirations when it comes to uh to cooking and coffee Maybe that's maybe that's a it's a it's a big question, but I feel like I want to get it out that's of the answerable. way. Terrible, huge question, big question. But like, give me something. You know, you don't have to you don't have to put your dreams on the line right now. But what what I would like to know is where you where you see yourself. Where do you see yourself in five years in the in the cooking and coffee business? In five years specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three hundred sixty-five days times. No, I'm joking. Nah, what? <laughs> Wherever like your next the next goal like that thing you're trying to reach. Next. I want to create a revolution. Yo. Nice. I want to burn down every Starbucks <laughs> okay, in now America. We're, now we're cooking. You thought we were cooking <laughs> before. Kidding. No, I'm listening. I'm listening. No, no, no. I um, I definitely I, I want to get more people interested in coffee, the coffee that I work with for okay. sure. Um, in, in what capacity? When you say interest, that's what I'm. Uh, I want because it's so much more than the beverage that everybody, every the average person consumes oh yeah they think of coffee as just coffee and coffee is not just coffee it's right, so right, right. much more than that and like i just wish people would engage with it intentionally and in my international travels you go to other countries that have different coffee cultures and you see like when i when i was just growing up here in america and stuff and getting into coffee in america it was like is this always how it's going to be like it's just, just people be, are always going to be this way with a coffee. cappuccino and then can you put no, no, two, two oak shots oak latte of, with three extra shots with half three a pump shots of, you know, of maple syrups, syrup everything. vanilla and you're just like is this coffee or am i just being pushed exactly. with sugar they're yeah, just yeah. forcing sugar into yes, my mouth yes. has it ever occurred to you that you are a professional drug tester yes you think <laughs> yeah, about it? i am caffeine. But, yeah. drug dealer i'm a i'm a bartender He's the whole barista. thing from start to finish yo you know? and something that's funny because for me like yeah no i i always when i was like a kid i was always like yes i really i want to just drink coffee and be like no you're a kid you can't have this and like so i and then when i was old enough to drink it, I was like, okay this is kind of boring and like everyone put all these different syrups and caramel and stuff and like i have mad allergies as as you guys know like so i just never cared about it but then i went i lived in switzerland for a mad long and like bro everybody Anywhere I was, there's just there was literally the only vending machines you'll see are espresso vesting, uh, vending machines. So every five minutes, somebody will take like a like a one euro coin or one franc coin in Switzerland, and they'll get themselves an espresso and drink it. And then like twenty minutes later, boom, another one. So literally, yeah. we we're drinking espresso like at least like seven or eight like like cups of espresso a day. Country. 
And it's yeah. like, it was wild. So it's like, and it was, no one's putting sugar. No one's putting milk in it. Milk alone is almost offensive, bro. Like, no, they're drinking it straight. And so, True. like, we were, so, yeah, so I got so used to drinking black coffee. Not even just black coffee, like, rest, like espresso or ristretto, like, double double espresso coffee. Oh, you pulled out a fancy word ah, there, yes, ristretto. What a, uh, tell uh, us, Tolu, what, is, uh, what does ristretto mean? Huh? So, <laughs> your coffee knowledge of the day. <laughs> ristretto is a, is a, is a um, basically, it's, like, a, a, the same portion as an espresso, right? But it's just, yeah, honestly, you probably know this way better than I do. Without a doubt. Well, no, that's why I'm asking you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm about to get, I'm about to get played on my own. Ristretto show. is style like two, of espresso. So it's two espressos, right? Basically, no. In the okay. Oh, I apologize. In yes, the same. So let me. Let me it's just... about the ratio. <laughs> so espresso is one to two usually. Okay. You get twice the amount of liquid out of the ground coffee you put in it in like thirty seconds. Ristretto is you get one to one ratio. Yeah. In like thirty seconds, so you get a much syrupy or thicker oh. usually sweeter what's and what's it called if you make a latte with a ristretto flat white i think it's called an abomination i think that's it's the... delicious actually oh it is yeah that's just yeah. good I would, well I would no like so that. different countries have different uh definitions for different drinks but with the flat white the fabled yeah, what flat does that white mean? i don't even know everybody what in america mean. loves to order but doesn't know what it is <laughs> <laughs> i've never um, heard of this before. but like in in australia it's like a cappuccino essentially but the milk is steamed much less aerated so there's less air in the milk okay. and then they usually pull a double ristretto so the double coffee, ristretto the coffee is like much syrupier and much okay. sort of more po- potent like, Okay, interesting. Yeah. So that's like it's like the the point is that that's is that the potency. standard coffee drink in that's Australia. Thicker. Is is this like flat white? Flat white. Huh. Yeah. Which is with the the double ristretto. Yeah. Huh, double I didn't ristretto. know that. Yeah, interesting. That's, right. that's really cool. Yeah. Dang. Well, a little bit of coffee knowledge out here. Yep. But uh, yeah. So it's like even like I never even appreciated it. I had a friend in in high school who used to like order like coffee that was like wild like cat like cat poop. Coffee. Yeah, food coffee. I've I think had. That's probably the first thing I coffee. told you yeah, about yeah. coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, yes. Civet coffee. Civet or coffee. Civet coffee. Yeah. So that was, I was like, wow, these people are weird. And then, like, and then, like, I started drinking some coffee that's, like, not just, like, yeah, just mad milk in it or whatever because people are trying to stay awake for, like, a final. And it was like, this coffee is actually, um, like, it has a taste. Like, it's not just, like, it's like sour and sweet coffee, and you yeah. can feel like oh it's fruity or something like sometimes that sometimes it tastes like meat like stews it's Excuse weird it's true savory savory so yeah this coffee yeah, just yeah, tastes like a whole beef stew Sasha gave me a bag of coffee once and I like stopped drinking it because it just tasted like beef stew I didn't like <laughs> that's it that's crazy what does that mean <laughs> that one had some defects in it and I just gave it to him <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just play your boy like that that's crazy so okay so okay Um, yeah okay so you you're trying to you're trying to change the way people interact and move around in with America coffee. in the but, United States. My my point was like, I was hopeless, but then I went to other countries and stuff and realized like people care more. People there. well, yeah. not only do they care more, but it wasn't always like that. It, they had to get there through time and like specific people, you know, bringing that to people and showing people that world. So felt very encouraged and now that's what i want to do in america mm. specifically or specifically in the new england area is sort of change the coffee culture here a little bit and also just make good coffee accessible to people here do you think it's like a before we move on like a, a issue with like consumerism you think that's the concept completely, completely. Yeah. i mean especially in america like everything is i'm going to order something the way i want it you don't get to try the art of somebody else yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Where they say, I created this, now I want you to try it. They're like, no, no, no. I want three this, and I want that, and I need it to be like this. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah and everything's grab and go. Like, very, just, there's a specific um, hmm. demand for quantity versus... Or quantity, like volume versus like quality. So okay, I see. Because they're just trying to make money. It's like a com- It's like a because it's like calling it a commodity is one thing, but it's like it's a very much goes from being like something precious that people like kind of toil over, just being like we need as much as possible. We're gonna subsidize it. It's like okay, yes. we're we're treating coffee like it's corn or something like that. Yeah, 
What do you think the direction is going in the U.S. in terms right now? Like, is oh, that's it a great getting question. better? So I would say it's getting better, but it's a hard question to answer because the entire time the coffee industry has been around, it's there's been this ebb and flow of increased prices for coffee, green coffee, and then the markets buying the green coffee complaining that the prices are too high. But then the price goes back down and then the farmers start crying that the price is too low. And they're, so there's this ebb and money. flow. And basically we always need the farmers to be getting paid more and the consumers kind of need to understand. Pay just, more. Pay more, yeah, essentially, is what has it always needed to happen. <laughs> Make more money. Stack um, paper. Yeah, stack paper. Don't drink coffee if you don't want bad credit. You know, if, <laughs> if you don't want you bad know, credit. Like, no, bad coffee. Like oh, if, bad. Yeah, true, true. You know, if you don't want to pay for for really good it, coffee, then, then don't pay for it. Then, you know? then, uh, then drink Red Bull, up. my brother. Yeah, drink right. Prime. This is not you a find sponsorship. Find caffeine other ways. Prime. Did you just plug Prime? <laughs> I would never do that. <laughs> I didn't do that. That was <laughs> bad. About that, the good. FDA, like, oh, like investigating like, Prime. Yeah, like, oh, this maybe has like, is it cracking it? No, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Prime is like some weird. Anyway, I'm not gonna get side into that, but, side note. Yeah. Um. What was it? Oh, oh, the where it, the U.S. is heading. In the coffee market, it's uh, so it, it was there was a little bit of a peak a little bit ago, like f- five, six, seven years ago, and it's gone down a little bit since then. But I feel like it's on the incline again, especially mm. coming out of COVID. Yeah, people, the cafe is like the most romantic space like for ever now. Is, you know, no, 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 I'm just saying, like, people want to, there's people are working oh. way more online and way more Remotely. remote, and they Remotely. love going to cafes. That's very true, yeah. And people are appreciating this. And the information now is obviously the most accessible that it's ever been. So a lot of people, and then especially with COVID, like nerded out at home and now are trying to get out into the real world. And, and participate. Kind of participate. Uh, yeah. So there's a really, I've I've even felt just in the past year, I felt like a lot of more people are getting, getting into, into it, it around me. But maybe that's just working it around that's me. True. I don't know. I mean, that's fair. Like, I mean when you're in a coffee shop it's hard not to be like yes yeah. there are people coming in and enjoying coffee but but in terms of like i i do know um cons- like how much we are consuming is increasing the consumption um, right oh okay it's from like just like a that doesn't mean quality but it, stuff. Uh, it consumption is increasing and that's including like starbucks and dunkin yes. donuts type okay. everything right there <laughs> but um okay cool so okay and then and for you Kayla, what what's like the thing that is uh that that you're hoping to be able to do when it comes to cooking i think I, there's kind of two um for one i mean this one the first one would just be really cool if it happened but probably not gonna uh, we're hoping don't say that okay yeah, you didn't even tell us what it is and we're already like oh damn he's not gonna having, do it like <laughs> i've ever since i was a kid i've always kind of wanted to like um not ever since I was a kid, I guess that's the wrong age. But once I discovered, like, I don't know, I was a teenager and I started watching Twitch, I've always just Hell liked yeah. live streams. Like, like just I've always thought it'd be the most fun job ever to just, like, interact with people all day. I like talking to people. I'm kind of extroverted. And uh, Wait, that's kind of what I do right now, Caleb. Yeah, but you can't really do that with cooking I'm dead. as easily. So anyways. Wait, wait, what do you mean? Well, you can, but I'm just saying the oh, way yeah. I'd want to do that, like the breeze. Was he gonna be like a hibachi chef or something? Yeah, like, yeah, oh, I could do that. Do I guess hibachi, yeah, volcanoes. Yeah, yeah. Don't listen to him. What the fuck? <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So I always thought, and also like creating things. Yeah. And when you do it like a live stream, it's live. It's like you're doing it live. So you know, the chat can be like, "Hey, uh, I dare you to eat an egg yolk raw." Yeah, and you could do it. You, you know, just get salmonella on stream. Like, it'd be kind of sick. Yeah, but nah. anyway, so that that would be one thing that would be <laughs> aspirational that'd be sick but my main thing is i i just want to um like eventually create uh i think a brand would be cool like um a product that's local and um uh i want something that's like unique like a lot of people have food that's very similar to other people i like making shit different you know i want to make shit weird and um i like weird yeah and uh yeah, and just use cool ingredients and stuff like that. And uh, I want to, my goal would be to get something that, like, someone recognizes. You know, they taste something like that. That reminds me of, 
of his shit, you know? Okay, some like some Caleb type food. Yeah, some Caleb type food. You okay, know, you know he, what I'm I, saying? I would say like even today this dude whipped up some like he just like he just put it together. Like <laughs> he was just like, Yo, what if these things went together? And they did. It was crazy. Like some like corn and like what what would you call what you made? Like does it did, did you give it like a salad? Corn salad. Uh, I mean I've I've well, seen stuff like that. Can you can like you that. give it like a French name or something like? Can you make it a, uh, a Le Maze de uh, de mayonnaise? This is corn de bigs. Yeah, corn de bigs. <laughs> <laughs> a la carte. Uh, a la carte. A la carte. <laughs> a la carte. <laughs> Yo, so cool. So yeah, I mean, oui. I like oui. that one. I like the the concept of just like yeah, I'm gonna take this thing and I'm gonna put my spin on it. You know, it's like I want to make it mine and I want to make it. In front of everybody, you know what I'm saying. So I, I think that's cool. I think that's yeah. pretty sick. What, what's your favorite like type of food to work with, bro? Are you a pastries guy? People you always a corn ask guy? that. I like. Okay, I don't really like bacon as much. I like baking, but baking. Most people who bake, you follow rules, and I don't like following rules. <laughs> bro, I like. I like. He skateboards, my... bro. He's pretty anti-establishment, <laughs> honestly. If if any Ominous. out of the three of us, he's probably like the second most likely to be an anarchist. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, most <laughs> I'm gonna get assassinated. Okay, go ahead. What are you gonna say? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't like following rules as much. So I, that's why I kind of separate ice cream from that because, like, if you follow some rules with ice cream, you can kind of just do whatever you want, so whatever, long as you have okay. enough fat or sugar in it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and it's cold enough. Um, so I like, I just like experimenting, honestly, trying new stuff. Okay, that makes sense. I like find a new, new every time I go in like a new city or something. I try and find like a store I've never seen in my area and try and find something I've I, an ingredient I've never seen before, and then I'll usually buy it. Just buy it, try it out, see how yeah. you can do it with it or stuff. Did, did my you know? it's kind of unfortunate though because my pantry just has a bunch of random shit that <laughs> like. <You can't laughs> yeah, 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 that's fair. <laughs> I guess it it's like, not unfortunate. It's cool do? for me, yeah. but you're like you're just chilling with mad food that you can't. <laughs> eat. Uh, I'm wondering, like, is it really just an instinctive or intuitive process? Or are you just like, um, I don't think it is. Or, or is it like think, scientific? No, I mean, like, there's I know some. That this is sour and this is acidic. And I'm... Some of it is scientific for sure. But like it and some of it, I guess, would be instinctive. But I mean, <clears throat> you're like instinct or I don't remember what the word is. Um, you're like base ability will only get you so far. Like, oh, really, like like putting in work just and just learning yeah, yeah, and yeah. understanding it's like it's sense. like like an athlete that's naturally athletic is not going to be better than an athlete who's naturally <laughs> athletic there, and has been he's got the mamba man well, pushing yeah, the mamba. you know well so it's it's a bit of both i, see that, I would yeah. say it's like i mean it's like an artist a painter has to grind. well no you have to learn the mathematics behind okay this thing is yeah, geometric okay. in this way and and all you look at like old art it's all purposefully composed and stuff like this but they had to learn that composure they had to learn how to paint and layer color to make it look like light is bouncing off of something and you do that by sort of just literally painting pictures over and over again and grinding putting Getting in the work yeah, understanding sort of the physics behind it huh. like how the food works how the food interacts yeah, yeah. if you will how but it they... tastes together getting experience you know, and then sort of understanding it. and then it becomes more of an emotion or, a, or sorry more of, of a feeling when you're cooking the more right. experience that you do have in that vein i mean there are like i would say i, I guess i'd call them rules kind of but they're more like guidelines in the kitchen right, and, right, right. and literally all the time like if you ever watch like videos of like fancy restaurants the chef will be like oh we th came up with this dish because we heard this rule and we decided to break it and that's like exactly. that happens yeah. all the time it's like, so like the whole point is that you use those guide rails so you can understand how things work yeah but then once you understand then you get to break the rules as long as you understand why you're doing it yeah exactly and like you have a part reason to exactly. do it exactly and so something that i just i don't know i just was listening to a podcast yesterday about some like meditation and stuff like that and like the and most interesting thing was just like this concept where it's like people can you can learn a lot of things like you can get a lot of knowledge but nobody can teach you understanding no one can teach you how to take something and then apply it like i can show you how you cook like yeah. a cake or how you make like i make like my mom just made fried rice for you guys right mm -hmm. like me my sister and, and my mom all have like a different way of making fried rice but we all learned it from my mom and then now like we make it just and it's like 
I just do it. Like, it's not like I'm like, oh, yes, you have to put this amount of this and you have to put this amount of the spice. It's like, no, we just do it because we get how exactly how it works. And then we built like we got how it worked and we put it into practice and messed it up and made something that was disgusting a couple of times. And then yeah. you get to a point where like, it's even it like like at my restaurant, like there'll be like a project and like every day of the week, there might be a different person doing that. Usually not. Usually it's the same person. But like. Yeah. Every almost every person will have their own way of doing that thing, but as long as you're getting the outcome you want or you desire or it's it works, good, right? even if it even if it it's not exactly what you want, it's all that matters, you know. Gotcha. I would say along that, like you were talking about, uh, knowledge yeah, of like or like understanding, like where things you learn and, and then stuff that you you can hear get. the words, but then yeah, you're How do getting. You make it's sort of knowledge applied over time. Exactly. Yeah. But I would say to add to that, because I think about that all the time, something that's obviously been for me is guided experience. And I yeah, like, I always thought, thought about that, that and thought, oh, it must be one to one, you know, like, oh, I have to put in 50 hours of work to under to have the same knowledge that that dude is who put in 50 hours. But Oh, the secret if you can have someone guide you there you can yeah, get it, so cut it in like an hour because he gets it and then he, he gets can it. put you on a path that lets you cut through a bunch of things that he didn't understand originally yeah that's like skateboarding if you skate and i suck at skateboarding if you skate with people who are really good you'll learn way faster than if you skate with people who it's, suck it's because they see it's like almost like they see you going through the process they went through before and like i, I Try this. Just, and just yeah. skip all these steps I had yeah. to go it's through. Like, yeah, I, it took me this many times to realize. And, like, they get, like, this innate understanding because they got to suffer through it. But, like, they can put you on a path so that your brain can hit that, that like, jump immediately. You know, it's like you didn't have to do – it's like I didn't have to learn, like, I don't know, like, a bunch of different, like, things before I learned calculus. Like, you could yeah, just yeah. – go read that and then try that out and get yeah. that to work. And then now you're there, you know, you don't have to go through like 2000 years of mathematics. I can just yeah. do that. you know, yeah. there's like so many different steps between what we actually use, you know, so you have to suffer through so many things to get to the stuff that you can actually take down out of like the, uh, the clouds and be like, I'm going to use this in my life, you know? Yes. So it's, it's pretty interesting. So, um, would you guys consider what you guys do in art? Well, it depends on like what aspect of what I'm doing because being a barista, kind of artistic, you know. Well, like, I, I mean, make some little art. There's there latte there. art, <laughs> right? But then most of my job is talking to people and explaining and teaching people. The art of the deal. Yeah, it's sort of. <laughs> okay, I'm done. It's a uh, service, so it's uh, just yes. you know, so, bending yeah. to other people's will. Are you but, a fan of that? No. Nah. <laughs> he's like not really yeah <laughs> no no i mean it's i love my job but you know it's just the way people that come to me specifically about coffee that is tiring but it's still a great job and if you handle it the right way it can be a great opportunity to teach someone something or to have like a meaningful experience for them you know but so there's the barista side, which is interacting with people. Yeah, I get to do latte. I get to make coffee sometimes, but it's not really that artistic because it's more so, I mean, I am crafting something and crafting an experience. And, um, it's true. Like what part of it? It's like, I think part of it is like, what part of it are you focusing on? Like someone could say like, someone might find art in the, how do I make somebody come in here and buy or, like, say somebody's coming in, they just want, like, I don't know, I want a coffee because I'm tired and I have to get to work right now. Yeah. But you're like, wait, how can I make you appreciate this? Yeah. Like, that could be an art, you know, just as much as how do I take these beans and turn them into a cup of delicious coffee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, so, actually, that's kind of what I was trying to say is I do think it's an art. And it's kind of, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, oh, the latte art right, or right. the making the coffee. It's crafting the experience and turning something around into a meaningful experience, making someone's day better with okay. a cup of coffee in a more meaningful way. Nice, nice. Kind of kind of a little microcosm yeah. of how you'd like the whole American exactly. coffee exactly. industry to change. Wow. Beautiful. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> Don't buy Dunkin' Donuts anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so in, in Slave cooking. labor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so I feel like in cooking, I feel like it won't be like, yeah, obviously, but like 
what i mean one do you yeah do you think what you do is art and then also like um what what either what makes it art and what about it do you think is art i think yeah for sure it's art i mean like at my job like even like the same dish plated by multiple people can be plated differently like i mean there is a standard for sure but you can do it like i might set up this garnish one way and another person might do a different way and, and the the difference i think is kind of a big like factor in why it's art is like you're getting to express yourself in the way you do it but at the same time like if you do art enough i feel like it's also just work <laughs> eventually it should work well I think it. I mean, it's, I it's a work book. from start. Like, yeah, exactly. I think what happens is that you appreciate the art of other people. Like, I would even say, like, and this might be crazy, but like, even just like your mom just like taking a bunch of ingredients and then just like finessing food for everybody. Yeah, it's kind of an art of its own, right? Definitely. And it's like that's an expression of that, right? And then you go and you get inspired by that like expression, which is either you being like, "Wow, like this is just like somebody taking care of other people," and like that is an art. But then it could be you then get inspired by that and you want to chase that thing. But then it's like now you have to actually get good at this. It shit. feels like a, getting good at something is worth yeah, yeah, yeah. it. It feels hard. a lot more like uh, art to me when I'm like off and I'm like, like I'm like, oh, I just want to cook something for fun. The then when I'm like making the same thing over and over right, right. again, you're getting like, a, times like a, a, night. a ticket like, all right, I need I need a salmon. And I need it on, on table four in, in 10 minutes or whatever. <laughs> and you're just like, why am I here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I'm playing. But it's like, it's like part of it, you know, because like even for me, obviously, you know, most of what I do is like program. Like, I don't know how people feel about that as an artistic expression. But like, I also think that when it comes to things like, you know, building like a project or something that people are using, like there's like an artistic expression in de- and like you were saying, like designing an experience that impacts people's lives in a certain way. And like that, I don't know if that's like some universal art thing, but like, you know, there's a couple pieces of art in the room, right? Dude, that thing that is one's sick. sick. Right? So and, it's sick. Like, and it's like, what does that tell? Like that makes you feel something. Like, okay, it's like a family of people. You should take a picture and like post it on the YouTube video. But it's like gives you like this thing where you're like, what does that tell you you know like how do you feel once you've done that it does it feel like okay like get the same feeling yeah. as and for people who are who are watching it's like a picture of like a family of like like it sounds like like almost like maasai people like walking yeah. yeah like walking through the desert they have all their stuff with them so it's like they're going on a journey you know almost reminds me of when my dad used to drive us to like like Idaho or something like that in like a two day yeah, car got, ride. They got the cooler on exactly. Head. So yeah, it's yeah. like it's like a whole family trek. And so you <laughs> and so like for me, I think that a lot of times like art is like this thing where human beings will like portray, like take their own experiences and like try to connect with something. You know, and I feel like you can do that through like so many different. For like, me, you know, I feel like the definition. Obviously, there's like it's not like a there's not one definition. I already wrong. think you're wrong. You're wrong. But I was gonna say <laughs> I feel like to me the only thing that really makes art art is like being able to having something be something that you express. Mm-hmm. So like that's why like AI art if you're like if you're like making AI art but you're like it's like expressing your emotions, expressing your creativity, that's art, you know. Right. There's no reason why it wouldn't be more so than any other type of art. Okay, mm. Art is self-expression. Yeah, maybe. It's, it's self-expression. Okay. Oh, in, in, That's like, like in any capacity. Definition. Yeah. So okay. So I'm like, like <laughs> I guess maybe not. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I see it. I mean, it's like obviously art itself is insane to even try to like. Define. Like, I can go like, yes, that's art, but I can't be like this. Like all of this is what art is, and nothing else is. Because it's like, okay, what are you going to, how are you going to put it in a box? You can't do that. And so it's like, there's no gap. There's like a gradient where it slowly goes, okay, bro, that's just like, that's a newspaper ad. Like, but then they're like, that's "Ah, just ah, a bunch of stuff. newspaper ad. Yeah, yeah, that's just an artist to draw the newspaper ad. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, even like something like type, typography, like someone would be like, yeah, like the way some lettering is done can be art. I typed it at 30 RPM. Exactly. And that was an expression because 30 RPM is like, 30 ah, BPM, it. which is wait, what's the average uh, uh, heart wait, rate? Is it 60 w, BPM. 30 60? WPM is what oh, I mean. Oh, WPM. And Sorry, then 60, words per minute. I typed it at 60 WPM, WPM, which is like 60 BPM, which is the heartbeat. And the heartbeat is, and then you're saying, "What the fuck?" <laughs> but um, I was gonna say something. This is like not hasn't anything to do with cooking, but like, do you guys think that like 
that something like a like a vista like you're say you're just walking in the woods in new hampshire and you get to like it opens up into like a like a little clearing with a pond is that art I don't think I think that's beautiful, but it's yeah. not art because no one created it really. Just but it's unless, God's art. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, they got you on that. Uh. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Okay, so it's really so for you. You feel something like... can be really something can be beautiful, but that doesn't mean it's art. You right. Know? I see. But do you feel when you see it? Do you get like if you see like a picture of like I don't know if you ever seen a picture of like some Switzerland like Austrian mountains and it all feels like and and stuff mm-hmm. well picture does maybe feel beautiful because then to you? Uh, yeah, or does it, it does. feel artistic i guess it could feel like like, more, like it's a yeah. painting or something but mm-hmm. like i think like you want to see the humanity in yeah it, part of the thing that is art is like it's it's creative you know okay yeah but say someone takes a picture of a if landscape a picture of it then it is art you know and, and maybe you could say that the reason for that is that like now they've ca- they've like Said, I wanted you to see this. Yeah, I exactly. Wanted, I took this, I put it down so you see could look this at way. it the way that I'm seeing it yes. from this camera, which is like, which makes sense. I see that. Hmm. Well, interesting. So, do you, do you think uh, creme brulee is art? I mean, yeah, I've sure. Had... Depends how it depends <laughs> yeah. how it's made, I guess. Yeah, how much they care, right? Okay, okay, we're done with art. I'm done with art. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so, like, like I don't know. When it comes to like food stuff. I obviously I I have mad allergies, so it's like my my relationship with food. Dude, you're the worst customer. No offense, but <laughs> yeah, like, of course, uh, I completely yeah, agree. Because <laughs> I'm going like, it's the um, way he talks and get, everything. Like, are there hazelnuts in the? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to know if you guys serve this, but with no milk. It's like my brother, <laughs> that's a cheesecake. <laughs> He's like, no, Dude, we don't go serve to that. a hospital. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you considered just not I... eating? <laughs> <laughs> Is starvation something you've ever uh, contemplated? Um. But yeah, so it's like, I don't know, growing up a lot of times, like a lot of the things that people like put a lot of attention into, like, like, I don't know, like, yeah, like baked goods and like cakes and stuff like that. I just don't care. Like, and it's like, I just like to eat things that taste good, honestly. And honestly, so, I kind of, I kind of can see that. Yeah. So it's like my, my food thing is about like, I like pasta. I like a lot of, I mean, because it's like I all like milk and nuts are not on the option. So I just care a lot about like savory things meats and pastas and at stuff. The but, end of the but day, here's the thing though here's what i want to say is it's <laughs> not your job to like curate that kind of stuff <laughs> yeah. like that's part of the that's part of the i don't know the being the expert or having the thing being a cook or a coffee guy is people will say all the time is i don't really care oh, about yes. coffee Word. You know, I don't want to get all nerdy about it. And yeah, you don't have to actually. No I just want right, to right, serve right, you right. a good coffee. You don't that's have to true. know that it's a good cup of okay. coffee. Okay, that's but I want to serve this to you, right, and right, you'll, right. you'll you'll take and you'll like it. Guys. No, no, you'll understand that it is a higher quality coffee. <laughs> you'll understand. You know, <laughs> you'll gain. Even knowledge. if you don't, even if you don't, aren't like, oh, I know this is like this way, and it's like not bitter and over extracted or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. you will know that it tastes better it's good it's better than what it, you could have been drinking it'll make you happier Word. you know i okay. think okay. so the, okay my I point see. is like it's not it's not people from the outside it's uh, not you don't have to know all this yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, you don't have to yeah, get into true. it you don't have to it's, it's just your job to be like okay he probably serves good and coffee and it. i just serve you good coffee right, that's, right, right. that's all like, it is trust in the expertise like it's like the specialization of labor for a reason like yeah. this dude loves coffee and you get to skip like 10 years of coffee like research and understanding and yeah. just drink this cup like you don't have to you, be you can just enjoy yeah. it you don't have to be like oh I, I i don't i need to know what you know this obscure culinary experience is from this one country you know this right, what right, this right, dish right. is i can just go to a restaurant and have a delicious meal and go away with me having had a delicious meal right because like i think i mean a big thing that yeah that i see a lot is just people like i would never pay that much for whatever whatever I could just get that from Walmart for, yeah, and your life sucks. And, like, you don't, like, you don't appreciate anything. Because it's, like, where, where do you, like, take value out of, you know? Because it's, like, part of it is, like, the hard work is, like, people actually taking the time to cultivate these things to, I don't know. It's, like, we could get into, maybe we'll, we should do that, honestly, is that, like, like, the process of actually making a new type of coffee. Like, when mm-hmm. somebody's, like, wants, not, like, I guess, the coffee types, 
that you drink are kind of pretty well set maybe well so in terms of like, like a coffee bean like when i yeah, want to make yeah, a yeah. new flavor or okay something. so there's different there's a couple different factors that influence flavor in a coffee yeah. the first one is genetics so there's different coffee species but within the species there's also different coffee varietals so we primarily drink one coffee species called arabica <laughs> nice that's that's like seventy percent of world consumption. They have their own stock exchange. That, yeah. That that brand. yes. Then there's uh, robusta, which is also a large portion, but it tastes terrible. <laughs> then there's like a bunch whole. Nice. There's hundred and thirty, so there's a whole bunch, but we don't really uh, drink anything else. But arabica within that, there's all these different varietals, and then when you choose a varietal to plant, you can plant the varietal, the genetics, and depending on how well it's grown basically or you know pretentious people say terroir um I it was know, terroir terroir like some sort of um, earth, uh, the french it's yes, always the, the french, french. terroir c'est, c'est comme ça tu but vois. um and then after growing i mean if there's a couple different factors there so there's like volcanic soil or whatever but the 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 point of all the soil and stuff is not actually it doesn't like oh you can't like taste oh i can taste the salty mist from the sea here it's more like okay if you have this soil in order f- for it to grow well you need this type of watering or this type of thing and so right. that influences how well it's grown and then which influences flavor mm-hmm. and then you also and then after that you can choose a processing style so how oh. the seed is actually taken out of the fruit and that has its own impact on the taste that can impact flavor as well okay. can you tell us the main processing styles yes i would love to <laughs> i get this question about 300 times a day um no it's so there's there's three main processing styles so coffee is a fruit is a seed of a fruit and so Does you have to taste get it tastes delicious it's oh. super sweet tastes really? like uh, melon honeydew <laughs> um super mango sometimes but oh, um interesting it's there's like no fruit that's why you don't it's like really small it's like there's a only a tiny bit of mucilage. the bean is like most the of bean the bean is most of the fruit it feels like a human and the skin is really we, thick too we did that for the fruit it probably we was, may have yes that fruit was probably pretty cool imagine if we bred you the know coffee for a fruit but we kind of fruit make a juice out of it caffeine? it contains more caffeine than the seed itself Okay, well what do we do here what happened <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, so, okay, okay. so <laughs> so we can um so you have to get the seed okay. out of the fruit. You can right. do that three primary ways. You can let it dry in the fruit and then hull that off. That's called a natural process. Since the sort of mucilage, the sugars, the acids are in contact with the seed for a longer period of time and it's fermenting, mm-hmm. you usually end up getting heavier bodied, sweeter, fruitier, but sometimes funkier kind of cups of coffee. Okay, That's the oldest style of processing because... You didn't you have to use water it. or anything. Super oh, easy. So okay. you can just dry it out. But then you can do what's called a wash process as well, where you pull it off when the fr- fruit is f- fresh, and then you l- let that ferment in barrels until the mucilage kind of ferments off, and then you let that dry. And that's called the wash process. It ends up in a very clean flavor. And then you can do a honey process, which is basically in between, where you take some of the mucilage off, and then you let that dry. And then you pull the parchment off because there's kind of two layers. There's still a layer of protection after that. Interesting. So this dude, this is really the coffee man. You know, sometimes I call him the coffee man just as a joke, but like he, this no, one, he really actually knows. Yeah, what you he's didn't even about. talk about roasting yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before we get into into nah, the yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 true. But yeah, like it's like squad, like the process that it gets to um to get to. I don't know like coffee as as it is so it's like really just like it's a genetics and it's how you make it or how, how you, you grow how, how you, you grow, grow it, it yep. how you like dry it and remove the seed yeah and then from there like then yeah, how you green roast it, coffee yeah. and then he caleb has mentioned so in your question is how the f- different flavors change yeah you can yeah. get like how do you get different flavor flavors out? from roasting differently like you can roast darker you get a bolder less you get no acid you get a much Burnt. darker kind of flavor huh. or a much bolder, um, oftentimes more bitter kind of flavor. Okay. And if you roast lighter, you're usually roasting 
Um, there's there's much more acids present, and you can taste more of the characteristics of the bean. So as you roast kind of more, you kind of they start to all get the same. But the less you roast, it kind of to a certain point because mm -hmm. you have to roast up into a point where the flavors actually become soluble. That's called first crack in the roasting process or whatever. It's a process. But you guys do there, crack. I I don't <laughs> usually talk about roasting as an influence of flavor because yes there is an influence in flavor but to me roasting is so objective objective what does that mean like it's just this one way to do for it. me there is one way to do it per coffee that you have so like oh, each okay. coffee has its roast and that's what the coffee should like be that coffee needs this because of it's like like it's makeup and yes. what it is okay. but it's it's still that's the point of roasteries is that's their art they're saying this is what I think the roast should be for this sort of bean. And people do differ on that. But I, for me, because even in my, my, my coffee judging thing, I'm not judging the roast. I'm judging the coffee quality for what it is. Right, right. And the roast is kind of not adding to that. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So now, now coffee tasting, bro. Oh, yes. Coffee tasting. Coffee tasting. If you, if you don't mind, you know, while I have you here, tell us a little bit about this this uh, thing like one like yeah how did you get into coffee tasting because it was like it was like a process it was like maybe a short um like understanding of the process of becoming a coffee taster and then what does that look like to be a coffee taster so the process was kind of was through people because i mentioned i had a south african friend who is what they call a q grader a q grader means quality grader there's a whole Q system. There's this company called the um, CQI, Quali Coffee Quality Institute, that sort of invented this way of objectively sort of viewing and grading coffee. Um, and then the world kind of took that, and that's how we do things like import, export, sell coffee, set a price, do all these kind of different things with this sensory sort of thing that many people think is subjective. But um, yeah, so there's this whole system and I knew this guy, he was a Q grader, which means he'd taken this test. He was also like a Q instructor, which means he's been a Q grader for like 10 plus years, like a really long time. So he was an expert in this. And I, I mean, I'd heard of like coffee tastings and stuff. I've done them myself, but I didn't really understand that there was a whole structured world behind it. He showed me that sort of structured world. Um, and I sort of got into coffee tasting from him. Mm. And then when I came back from South Africa, I went to go get a coffee diploma. And in order to get a coffee diploma, like, like I had to, and like... had to take an exam, which had some coffee tasting tests and stuff. Okay. So I did those. I passed. Wait, did nice. you take the exam coffee. online? What? No, it's an in-person exam. Where was it? So <laughs> you just taste did they just like give you a cup of coffee and are like, all right. He just prints out the coffee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, a piece of paper, <laughs> prints it out. So like the anyway, carry on. What were you saying? <laughs> um, so you can. Was this the one you did in New York? This is the one I did in New York. Basically, right. different people can get certified to run the core, the tests throughout you know, everywhere. So there's different people all over the U S but the closest guy to me that was the cheapest was in Rochester, New York. Hell yeah. Epic city. Shout out to know. my Rochester. Shout individuals. out to Rochester, <laughs> that garbage plate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. But, uh, I drove out six hours. Dang, you drove there, I drove there like twice. Wow. Impressive. Two different times for two, two different tests, but the test for the sensory one, which is tasting is, yeah. You have to be able to name a couple different defects. Actually, mm. every single defect yeah, like blind. So dynamite. basically, what you're doing, yeah, yeah. with with coffee instead of milk. But <laughs> you'll the a coffee okay. tasting set up so that you have three cups of each coffee. Okay. On a table of like five or so different coffees. Right. And you evaluate the coffee at different stages of like brewing. So first, you smell it when it's before you started brewing when it's dry. Mm -hmm. Then you go back and smell it after the water's been poured in. Yeah. And then you smell it when you're stirring it after four minutes when it's finished brewing. And then you start tasting it. <laughs> slurping. 
aerating it all over the mouth. And slurping sort of and aerating the coffee. Breathing. That's, that's funny because Josh used to hate me because he said the way I sip is too loud. And then and now he's out coffee, here. He's like out here slurping. No, but the way he sips is too loud. It's the way gotcha. he, or swallows is is it, the sipping is not the problem. It's the gulp. Yeah. The... <laughs> oh, I hate that. I hate uh, that isn't so it the much. worst? Yeah, no. He I, does it all the time. How, yeah. how am I supposed to control <laughs> that? Funny. I think the thing I don't like, though, is when people chew. I hate chewing. Ooh. When I can hear somebody chew, I literally have to get Isn't up and it, leave. Right? Like, you can't awful. ignore it. You it's can't so, ignore yeah, it. Yeah, because it's like, now I'm here in your mouth. Yeah. Like, I feel yeah. like I'm in the mouth and the food's getting chewed around me. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm melodramatic, but yeah. still. I'm just not nah, going to chew food anymore, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> just, just swallow it whole, bro. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. <laughs> do, do the world a favor. No, I'm joking. But <laughs> anyways, so like evaluating coffee. Yeah. Um, to to become a taster, you have to be able to name all the defects. There's a okay. good different defects for roasting, for green coffee. There's like moldy, phenolic, mm. all these different kind of defects that taste a certain way. I have to know them. Oh, so I have to be def- able to detect them at a certain like amount. amount. Yeah. So yeah. wait, if it's a, so, defect isn't not isn't necessarily something that we want to remove. Is it or yeah. is it always to be? No, removed? no, no. It's no, it's not some some so just happens it, to be... actually that one of the definitions for specialty coffee which is the specific vein of coffee that i work within is you can only have one defect per 100 beans oh wow but you can still have defect so you, you just have to keep it you can be consistent intentional with the defect yeah because the defects affect and taste. some defects are more extreme than others okay. some are less some you can taste it a little bit, but it's still sold at just a discounted price or some. It affects Wait, price. What are and the stuff. main causes of defect? Mold and different. There's different ones, but it's actually ironic because one of the defects, the phenolic defect, U.S. people hate it, but Italians love it. Yeah. So we just sell all of it to Italy, and they'll buy it for a higher price. Than, Interesting. Than we actually want. Wait, we need for it. So what what is what is the defect as far as taste goes? What is yeah, it? I was wondering. It that tastes there. like uh, rubber. Oh. Burnt oh, rubber. Burnt rubber. Sort of. It's this kind of chemically rubbery kind of flavor. Yeah. It's very specific. Um, but Italians roast really, really dark and they like huh. sort of that intense kind of flavor. Okay. So that's kind of it kind of adds to that. Right, right, right. But it's just funny because the rest of the world hates that Does flavor. Not like it at all. But they don't view it as a defect because they like because, it. Yeah, they like that flavor palette. But yeah, th- so that, that being that's that that's, like that's the whole conversation with defects. It's like they are defects. They add flavor and stuff. Some there's one defect that is actually like harmful and you always you have, have to, to get rid it. of. Which one is that? It's the black mold one. Ooh, I can't remember the specific does it name cause, of like, it. Like bubonic plague or something. Yeah, basically. Essentially, yeah, essentially. Bleed out of your eyes. Like, this yeah. coffee is so good. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it tastes horrible. Yeah? It's yeah. disgusting. But then it's all, is it, like, actually bad for you? Or no, it yeah, it's actually good? bad for oh, you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Interesting. And then... I can't remember... Where, oh, oh, so you have to defects. be able to name these defects to, like, yeah, pass yeah. the test. Okay. But then you also have to be able to judge a... a coffee for its quality and that's basically just judging about judging balance how well are these flavors in the cup balanced out and how so the end goal of that there's a whole scoring system right out of 100 points but basically anything before 80 points is not in specialty coffee huh. which means okay it's either got a defect or is roasted too much or something. It's mm-hmm. just not enjoyable enough. Not to, like worth that. It. That's below eighty, but then okay. it goes all the way up to a hundred technically. But really, it's up to ninety, and then ninety plus is like presidential, which is very rare. I mean, it happens. I've scored like six or seven nineties in my career so far. How, 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 you ju- how do you judge your, your, your capability? How confident are you in your palate? So my scores are really good actually. They're accurate? Because right? dude, imagine during these panels. Imagine with, he, was, he was trash. No, I was yeah. going to say, imagine being grounded because you failed coffee. <laughs> like, damn mom, I got an F in coffee. Yeah. <laughs> my, that's, gonna, my, that's how my kids are. Coffee um, yeah. GPA yeah. is low. That's, that's okay. tough. Um, the coffee PA, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, but yeah. So they, when I'm doing these with these panel of judges, they do statistics is super important because okay. you have to make sure that a cup of coffee wasn't just it, right? it wasn't just 
accidentally scored top 10 right it was actually a lot of people yeah agreed. a lot of people yeah agreed. And there's a whole bunch of statistics behind everything but then at the end they go through everybody's like scores statistically Check them out. make sure that you were scoring the same score for each all the coffees or at least mm-hmm. close enough you know and then how well you were scoring with everybody else and right. like the range of scores that you gave to coffees and stuff like this right right and right. The, the last panel I did was like really good, which is very relieving to know because I was actually like one of the better ones because I've only done this like a couple times and you know, being so young, I was like, Am I actually doing this? Yeah, like man. am I am I am I yeah, keeping I like up with everybody? And like it, massive, I am. That's so good. Like, cause was, I feel like there would just be a massive, massive like, impo- boost, yeah. imposter syndrome capability there. Totally. That's but, how but, I felt. Yeah. But you're like you hit you hit them them flying colors. I hit the numbers. We love to see so. it. We got a real this is a real coffee individual here. Real, real coffee. Real coffee gentleman. In the house. Hell yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Interesting. So okay. So then you you started you started doing a little bit of a little bit of traveling. How many? What places have you been to in relation to coffee? Well, outside the U.S., I've been to South Africa, El Salvador, Honduras, and Taiwan. So far, not bad. That's that's a in pretty like good one place. year. In one year, yeah, true. Like yeah, you, so like every like two months, he's like, yeah, bro, I'm about to go to Ecuador. That that's or, the craziest bit is it's been like yeah. one year. So. And, and so, like, question is like, okay, one thing I'm, I've been curious about is like, do do you have to just cover all your your travel expenses? So, eventually, I won't have to. <laughs> nice. But for, for, right for now, now, I've been paying for flights okay, pretty good. much. But then everything else is taken we'll care of usually. That's so still a good deal. that's pretty sick. Yeah, it is yeah, pretty yeah. sick. But uh, uh, honestly, it, it has a lot to do with just being friends with people. It's been like. Right. Hey, I'm gonna be in this country Play. if I can crash at your place. Right. If I can get, and then they just hook everything up. That's so, so sick. That's really awesome. And then you know, it's surprising because you think about coffee, and you think like, oh, oh, poor farmers and like right. this and that. People getting, and it's true. There's a lot of inequality that happens, and like it's part of my job to bring coffees to market and show underrated areas so that the correct prices can be shown and stuff. But there's also there is a lot of money in coffee yeah, yeah, and like yeah. all people, my people friends, money. all coffee people, they're all hilarious. Cause they're all like super like bougie and like, I wouldn't yeah, say they're rich, yeah, but they're yeah. all financially free. You know what oh, I mean? Okay, like they just travel the world constantly and they're oh. like always doing for business purposes, but right. like they're living quite lavish lives, quite, you know? Nice lives and so as a younger individual, becoming friends with these guys is sick it's because wild. they just yeah, let yeah. you they just take you everywhere you know yeah you can, yeah yeah and it's, it's, it's really cool so like the first place you went was south africa yes you were there for a month and that was like was that is that was that your first time out of the u.s that was well technically i've been to london before but this is my okay. first real like time proper, especially on your own on everything. my own which there's nothing like walking into a country where you can't even speak the same language. Yeah, that's so crazy. On your own. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Especially, I don't know, as some white boy, you know, just yeah, like just, stepping just off the plane. Just like, yeah, what am I like, doing here? What's going I on? am in the city right yeah. now, you know? Yeah, for real. It's but so interesting. It's a, it's a great feeling. Yeah. It's a great feeling. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. So, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so and then from there, you went to El Salvador. Yeah, I went to, so I had a friend, a coffee friend, he he owns a coffee farm, so a coffee friend for a coffee man. Yes, yeah. He he invited me to his farm, but it was really I was just staying with him, really. Right, right, right. Just and he has up. like five houses, so where is he? Know. He's chilling. He's <laughs> chilling. Yeah, the one does. Um, and then I went to Honduras to judge um, all of Honduras's coffee, just to see what was good. Well, I was a I was a coffee judge, so okay, I was part so of there this competition. You were doing a proper, yeah. Like, testing of their coffee yes yeah part of a panel of judges and then taiwan was the same thing okay so i hope to do lots of travel through that specifically because it's yeah right the best through where like what we were talking through the this competition called the cup of excellence oh i see i see they go to like each producing country and then they they test all their they taste all the coffee but that's the best experience because we're talking about like guided experience and that yeah that's like I'm with people who have who been in the industry experts. for 30 years. Right, 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 right. And I'm young. I can keep up with them, but they just They've take been, me, yeah. yeah. And then they can so. give you, like, these things where you just, like, you didn't even think about that because you're, like, 10 years early. But then yeah. you're just, you get to jump that, that leap. Exactly. That's, that's pretty awesome. Damn. Word. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's cool. 
I was gonna say. Um, yeah, I guess back to uh maybe back to our our cooking guy over here. Yeah. Oh, I was actually gonna say if we're wrapping up the coffee conversation, That's true. That you want to you want to be I on your way. unfortunately do have to be yeah 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 going somewhere. Yeah. But <laughs> I would. Uh, this has been a great conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, I, I uh, hope, hope to have you on the program again. Yeah, you know, I'd love to talk coffee more. I could talk for five <laughs> yeah, hours could, about coffee. So okay, cool. Many more episodes. Hell yeah. Okay, so coffee. maybe we're gonna we'll take we'll take a, a quick a quick break. Oh, my guy heads out, and we'll be back in like a minute. Perfect. Hello, testing. Hola. Greetings. Okay, we're back. We're back. The coffee man had to leave, but you know, me, I'm still joined here by by, by a cooking man, a cuisine man. One of those uh <laughs> Caleb. So we're gonna we're gonna get more <laughs> into the food stuff. So um yeah. What, what what uh so like okay, so you're trying to do some some food content online. Can you go go I'm I'm curious more about like what stuff that you wanna do and what like or what have you done? I don't know. I've I've kind of just been experimenting mostly, trying to find out like what to do. I was for a while like having like a a set like I'm gonna make this this night and streaming. Right. But the thing is like, it's like hard to do that. It for one that it's more work and okay. for two, I don't enjoy it as much as I do just like riffing something <laughs> yeah, and yeah, just yeah. being like yeah, I'm gonna cook something. Like, but the like thing is, is, I feel like it attracts more people when it's like a set thing I'm making. Really? It's because they recognize. It. Yeah, exactly. I feel like what would might be cool is if you did like, oh, I'm gonna do a remix on something. Like you were like, I'm gonna take this like food item and then be like, actually, we're gonna make it with pineapples. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay. But I think what would be fun is I just don't have enough viewers to do anything. Is to do I always like like when people do like stuff involving viewers like oh, yeah, yeah. the like viewers pick my viewers. ingredients so and, and stuff like that you know? yeah yeah i feel that i mean yeah that's true like vote have them vote for stuff yeah i feel like yeah i think it's probably just you just have to like like generate consistent. yourself well yeah of course but like <laughs> that's that's like rule that's like breathe but like i think <laughs> rule number two is like find stuff you can just do on your own so like i think something i was doing and i want to actually get back to doing it, honestly is like i just made like a little like like lottery thing that and then put a bunch of different options in it and then like for programming so i'll just oh, like sorry, i'll just randomly pick yeah so i had like a language a project and then like a constraint so like one would be like build pac like this is the one that i did which is so stupid build pac-man in so and so language but the screen is upside down <laughs> that was like a project sick. To, and i had to just do that which kind of sucked for like five hours i think also my next like in terms of like content goal yeah. is just like I've, I've done all my streams by myself but i definitely feel like if i had another person on or bro, more bro, let me guests, be your sous chef bro dude that would I'll, be fun I'll cut the vegetables. i like also like <laughs> like i don't even care if they're skilled in fact i think it'd be fun like my roommate no offense to him he <laughs> sucks at cooking i think <laughs> it'd be fun like, to do like a stream burns where, water and you're like Yo, where he's like here. cooking and i just have to tell him or something like that yeah, it's yeah. just like yeah, because honestly, I feel like by myself, I'm kind of boring. I don't really know how to, like, talk. What? But with another person, like, I can talk it's, forever. It's like the riff, bro. You, it's like you have to get that riff on. So it's like, That's true, yeah. So yeah. I think, like, the biggest thing is just do it. Like, honestly, like, and I'm not here to, I'm not going to give you a pep talk or something. But what I would say is, like, the, the thing for me, too, is that it's like you just have to, whatever you're doing, just do it. So it's like, say you just turn your stream on and cook dinner or whatever. And then you just do that until someone says, hey. And then after that, just talk to them, you know? Yeah. That's and like, true. but like, I think it, it would be, I think the, the thing I like about cooking stuff, obviously a lot of it is good in short form. Like when people do it on like TikTok or on YouTube, like obviously, you know, binging with Babish. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like mad people who cook on, on uh, Instagram. And like, um, people like to see things that they kind of recognize, but it's like a new twist on it. Or, like, they see the picture of what it could be, and they're like, oh, I wonder how they made that. So obviously, Twitch is kind of definitely more. No, that's what I'm saying. Twitch is kind of, if you want to grow for cooking, Twitch is probably the worst platform. Like yeah. YouTube. I mean, Twitch is a bad platform to grow in. Anything, yeah, for any, for any capacity, but, like, honestly. YouTube and TikTok, TikTok is the main one nowadays. Like, yeah, TikTok it, is fine. Anyone who's getting big in the cooking world nowadays is just getting mostly. Off of, off of TikTok. TikTok yeah, is, yeah, like, yeah. the way to do it. It's interesting. Yeah, like, cause my, the reason it's like, okay, yeah, I honestly constantly am like, should I 
be focusing more on YouTube videos. This is going to be on YouTube. But, like, should I focus more on making YouTube videos or should I focus more on streaming, just streaming dedicated? And it's hard to know because it's, like, I've been able to get, like, obviously, like, some success um, as far as, like, getting more people to follow me, getting people to subscribe to the channel from just streaming on Twitch and just being consistent with that. And, like, recently I've just been getting cooked. Like, I try to stream, like, on the weekends and, like, so many different things, like, every single weekend is making that hard to do. Damn, when's the time to stream? But then it's, like, I have my friends who who have, like, obviously they've been making YouTube videos for a minute now, but, like, they're constantly able to make progress because they can always fit in YouTube videos into yeah, their schedule. To, like, yeah. so it doesn't have to be, like, I set four hours. Like, no, I do a little bit of editing, a little bit of editing, and I get it out by the day I, I need to. I feel like the ideal situation, or not the ideal, but, like, like one way to do it which i've seen like people do is to get famous through one platform and then, and then just switch over, switch over yeah once they get viewers or not famous but you know get get, get popular enough for yeah, having an audience that they yeah. can actually have an audience because like yeah because it's like i mean and so like sometimes like on a friday like for a while yeah like i'd get like three or four people who would watch and like it's and i don't know what it is i think it's probably like one or one or two people. but um last couple streams but it's like i think it's just like consistency but also doing things that people are actually interested in clicking and on. also doing things that set that you people apart want. yeah the, other that's not just other creators oh yeah you're building a project like everybody else is yeah exactly which is like yeah because i had like currently i'm trying to do this thing where i'm building like a like a stream rank streamer like ranking website i'm trying to do it and like get other people in my community involved but i think i just don't have enough active community like i've had a couple people contribute or like some of them have kind of popped into the discord and other things to work on it but then yeah i'm still trying to uh figure out what i want to do there i think i want to i need to pepper in some more other types of programming and other things before i can really like kind of get into that but <laughs> see how it goes yeah <laughs> but um word so like Okay, so when it comes to like, uh, I don't know, have you have you worked at any like? I don't, I don't really know how the rankings. It's like five star, four star. Restaurant. Okay, so like, the top restaurants would be there's different like rankings. Michelin stars, yeah, too, Michelin yeah. stars. There's like one, two, and three. But the thing is, is what people don't realize is, um, Michelin is from the tire company Michelin. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, which is just so random. Yeah, like, so what's crazy. The basis? Why but, is that? Like. It's different in the depending on the country and depending on the area. So like in the US only certain cities are basically allowed to have Michelin stars. So right now that's like New York, I think, Washington DC, um, Chicago, LA, San Francisco, I think newly San Diego, and I think that might be it. So that's like five cities. Oh really? That are so allowed like, to have that type of that are they get stars. So like there could oh, be restaurants huh. that are that good, but they just don't the get grade, discovered. But at all. because they're in like some weird city, they're right. not they're not gonna be they're not gonna have a star. So okay. um the restaurant I work at was the chef used to be the sh- a chef. I think he was I don't I can't I don't know what how high he got i think it was the cdc which is like okay. the second in command mm-hmm. at a restaurant called um 11 madison park in new york which was like in 2017 it was rated the best restaurant mm-hmm. in the u.s or in the world i don't remember so it's yeah. like a pretty good restaurant very good restaurant. Got you, i got guess you, you could got say you. yeah i need three okay. michelin stars got you got you. but yeah i mean where my restaurant is we can't even get a michelin star so it's hard to compare <laughs> oh because it it's like in maine like there's just not even like yeah. the opportunity and even still oftentimes restaurants when they do are graded they're graded towards or compared to other restaurants in the city in that city and yeah. in like, uh maine okay. there's like there's not even who that are you many even to doing begin with, yeah so. it's like what are the like what's the quality level like what kind of dining are they even trying to get yeah through? do you think if you could get it would you be able to how what is how would you rate your 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 current restaurant? I would rate it very high. Yeah. The yeah very high. But, yeah. Um, the thing is, is like, I like, and you don't have to specify on your restaurant, but like, what do you think are the things that go into like a good rating? A good rating. I mean, it the, it depends. Like for for one service, like like at the restaurant I work at, like 
Eighty? Have you ever heard of eighty sixing? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like a restaurant term. It means like okay. it means like when you eighty six a menu item, it means like you're out of things. So you can't okay. sell it. So like okay. at my restaurant, we literally cannot eighty six something. Like if something's out, you're and you're working, it's your fault. You have to figure something out. And oh. Interesting. Which so, what do you say as a, as a worker? We have to like, like order food or something and get the ingredients. No, I'm, but I mean, like, you have to be that set up so that it's not even a it's not a even question. gonna happen. And if it does wow. happen, you have to figure something out real quick. But Interesting. Ho- hopefully, that never happens. Like, it is a team, so like, if something, to work together. if something does happen, you'll have other people helping you right, get right. up. Um. But, like, yeah, so, like, we're on a service level, and, like, every guest, like, you go there, you know you're being treated. Like, if you have, like, the slightest problem, they're going to address it. it for you. Yeah, yeah. Address it. Like, yeah, it's just we're there to serve you. Okay. And, like, you're paying a lot of money, so they, right, right, like, right, they, right. they want to make they understand sure you're not going to be The service it. that they're trying to provide, they it's keep like it, high, like, to yeah. that high level. Okay. That's, okay, that's cool. Um, Interesting. So, okay, so is there even, like, so there's Michelin star, but is it, like, it's just the one star, right? And then there's no, like, ranking below there's that. There's Michelin, one, two, and three. And then I think there is, like, a guide, which might include restaurants that don't have stars. Honestly, I've never really looked into that. But there's right, also, right. it's, like, that's just one ranking. There's there's multiple yeah, yeah. different things. There's um, uh, James Beard Awards. Um... There's, like, different magazines will have their own right, awards their thing. and stuff like that. So it just honestly depends. It's just, okay, but, like, at that point, you're just kind of in the – some do, some magazines are just, like, this is – I think they get a little bit reputable, right, and then they can just tell people yeah. that and this is And the thing also restaurant. about restaurants is, for one, there's not really, like, a top. Like, like you can always have a better restaurant. Right. right. There's, like, like – Restaurant? Do you think it's like more of like one it's restaurant ceiling, can focus so much on one detail that they become really good, and then another restaurant yeah, has just a whole different a approach. Really good at something else, or right? Something yeah. Completely different. So okay. yeah, there's not there's not a ceiling really, and also like there's so much variety. Like I could be a really good restaurant in one sense, yeah, and your restaurant will be also like amazing, but it's like a completely different cuisine of food or something like that. Mm, okay. So um. Yeah. Okay. And like, so what? What do you think? So like, from like four star to five star, like, what's like, what do you think is the, uh, like, in terms of quality? So like, is it like five star restaurants? Uh, it's a, lo- a small list, or is it kind of? That's just See, I don't every even know restaurant with stars, because like, or that's just something that people just use in the U.S. Yeah, or people whatever. just say like star every time it's someone's some like a five star or four star. I'm like, oh, it's like, all right, man, like is the food good? Stars? Yeah, and then like that's so true. Like it's just some shit. Like I mean, because I think that existed before like Google reviews or whatever, where it's just like that vote. It's not that. Like it's like, I mean, I I mean maybe it's just because I know there's five star hotels, but that's like obviously I I yeah. see that there was like five star restaurants. They but, probably are, but I don't like. I don't know. It's not what that you'd be grading it. On. Like there that might makes be five it star that. with like. Was it just more expensive or something? But I'm, right. I'm not entirely sure what which one. What do you think about like restaurants like um, like that new threat? Yeah, is it the uh, room like the the steak guy? Oh my gosh, he's the worst. He's the worst. Oh, why? He's scamming people. Really? Why? 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 His food is terrible. Really? You can just tell. <laughs> you can just tell. Well, like, like, ah, it's it's gross. He pours like melted butter that's burnt. Uh, and, the, like, just to fuck up the taste like, of the food. All over a steak. It's like it's like for the cost that you're paying for that, you could go to another restaurant and get something that would like literally blow your mind. Right, right, right. Like, cause it's like you get like you're, a you're paying for the you're paying for the, the celebrity. Yeah, like, exactly. The food. I feel like that's like like the biggest thing. I feel like maybe that hasn't hit the co- like the coffee industry. I feel like has gone the other direction, where which I was gonna ask about that, but like how for coffee it's like it's become so commodified that people are expecting like two dollar coffee, or if it's more, it's because you're adding syrups and yeah, sugar, yeah. and then food is just gets ridiculously the expensive. That's the worst part without of being better. Yeah, it's like I go to so many restaurants and I order something and eat it and be like, wow, I paid for something. 
that I could have made yeah, for way, way better, cheaper. For way cheaper. And you're just I, like, why? the most disappointing Why did I ever. suffer? Because it's like the thing that like like Josh was talking about where it's like you have to trust that these people have your best interests at heart and they're trying to give you something that's good. And like with coffee, like most people just don't give a fuck. But when it comes to food, people love the allure of like the romance, like, the, like you said, like the romance or whatever, the romantic nature of like uh, like a cafe or like a restaurant with like like fine like the fine dining thing and they want to take their wife there or whatever and so when you get there they give you something that's just not high quality but you don't know the goofball so it's like you're gonna you can get finessed i feel like what you get you're more likely to get finessed with good food and then underappreciate good coffee and like there is good food but it's like a lot of times it was like a lot of high restaurants know they're finessed they just like they like to take the Instagram just, story. I think some people also like don't cook much at home, so like, right. So anything is better than yeah. Anything than, is better than, than what they're gruel, eating at home anyway. Than gruel and dry chicken for the fourteenth <laughs> time. It's like, please, I don't, I can't take my wife's cooking anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go out to dinner, honey. <laughs> please, no more. It was like, yeah, 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 yeah. If I eat, if I eat another, if I eat another deep fried turkey, I won't, I won't make it. <laughs> I, won't, I won't survive till Christmas. Um. So yeah, what do you think about that? Do you, I mean, so obviously there's the celebrity. Do you, does that does that you think that um happens at like your restaurant? You see people. Taking oh, we've seen pictures. some famous people. Oh, wait, oh yeah. is that what you're talking about? Well, that, but like, I mean, more like, do people? Do you see? Do you notice that people aren't? taking in the actual meal and the ambiance and they're just like taking photos and they're kind of no i think most people like they're in it most people like the thing is that in like if you were in another city maybe people would come to a restaurant and be like oh right. i could get something a little better somewhere else but like right right we're definitely probably the best restaurant around not the best like best restaurant but like the most expensive Okay. The highest tiered restaurant. Okay. okay. The bougiest, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, when someone comes here, they're usually, most people have not, in our area, have not been to a restaurant like that. Like that, nice. And okay. so, when they come here, they're, like, kind of, uh, I don't, they're, like, amazed. I don't know if that's like the, the right word. Like, it's much like higher attention. than they would expect. Right. Yeah. Because it's, like, there's so much... It's like you're basically they don't have like, anything to compare to, really. Yeah, bringing area. you're like bringing the style from like um like something that someone would be like, oh yeah, that's just a restaurant in New York. That's but, literally what but then you're say, like, we got a review once, and people say that oh, all the yeah. time. They're like, oh, bringing New York to to Maine to, or whatever. To Maine, which is kind of sick because it's like yeah, for a lot of people, when you're in Maine, bro, you're you're out there. You know, you're, you're I mean yeah, you know, no shout out to my Maine people, of course. <laughs> but like you're kind of you're not like. You're not near Boston or New York or these places where there's like a lot of fancy restaurants or whatever, and so I feel like it's nice to be able to get still get that like fine dining experience out in the middle. But Portland's pretty cool. I was there a couple of weeks ago. Kind of sick, but um, nice. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I don't. Food, food is like a. Uh, it's, it's definitely a broad, one of those things. A broad, it's a, it is a broad, broad topic, and it's like okay, how do I get into it? Like, I mean, when it comes to like cooking that's something where like like you said before like i do not i'm so bad i don't follow recipes like i'll just put stuff together and then hope that that's it works how our ancestors wanted it yeah know. we're just go out and gather just hunt and gather and then get it popping bro <laughs> i've been reading a book about this is so random but i'm gonna bring it up bringing a book about like like homo sapiens it's like a book like a history book it's kind of in, it's pretty interesting honestly um about humans but like the, one of the things is that it was kind of like that people um decided to start like to move from hunting and gathering to being agricultural um not like in order to try to live easier lives uh -huh. and then what happened is their lives got harder yeah which is like <laughs> mad funny it was like they because they would like try to they would grow things so that they wouldn't have to keep gathering and they'd get a little bit of stability but then what would happen is it would lead to population growth which would lead to them having to work harder to be able to manage the population to make more food. And then that would also lead to bigger population growth. And so it ended up with like massive, a lot larger population because people were trying to basically have more secure food stores and it kept, just, they had to keep just chasing this thing. And so it was just like a lot of people's like lives, basically like now it's definitely kind of 
a little bit the other way, but it still sucks. Like I, I think a lot of people work a lot, but it was like the amount of time that somebody works. Yeah, I work like sixty hours a week. It exactly. sucks. <laughs> yeah, like and so it's like an average hunter gatherer spends like thirty hours working. And then yeah, and then people now are like in like like Loki sixty to eighty hours a week. Even in a corporate world where you're making mad money, you're working like eighty hours or whatever, and then you're also on the week working on the weekends and all yeah. Yeah. It's tough. So yeah, maybe we should just go back to hunting and gathering, bro. Just hunt just do a little bit of hunting and gathering and then and then just I don't know, play games with the with the kids. Kinda sick. You ever eaten a bug before? Um uh no. Um yeah, I think I've eaten crickets. Being like salt like salted crickets like that you get what's like camping. You've been to a lot of countries, right? Yeah, I've been to yeah, a, a decent amount. What's like the the, the weirdest or, or the weirdest food. food you've eaten. Damn, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know if I've eaten anything too crazy, honestly. Like I would say like like uh like snails escargot yeah i've eaten escargot but i've also eaten like uh like I love that. N- nigerian snail oh, which is... oh, we, we also have random. snail yeah it's interesting i we still we used to buy them i don't know where we got them from but we used to get them but yeah no i like escargot escargot it, good um but yeah no because most of the country i've traveled in are in europe so it's just like not many exciting in brain food. before no i haven't what what brains have you eaten? I've had brain a couple times. You were a zombie, it was, all, it was all gas every time. Wanna, I had you want to specify the animal? Okay. <laughs> uh, or are you just going to be like, I yeah, it's a little one, bit of human at brain? At least one time was lambs. I don't know what the oh. other one was. One was grilled. You ever had... Um, grilled brain? No. You ever had uh, yakitori before? No. Uh, what like is that? Japanese, like, grilling over with skewers. Oh, okay. But I had yakitori brain that was... We were brain at a yakitori place that was super good, and then I had, um, like it was like a cured brain thing, what, like what's the sort of like salami type, and that's what it tasted like. I don't know if it actually was. What's cured. the texture? Is it meaty? It's like so soft. It's is like it... you ever had like um? I love this, but some people don't. You ever have like a chunk of like a fat cap, like a chunk of just fat that's like yeah. super rendered out and soft? Yeah, yeah, and you just yeah. Bite it, it just like melts. That's what the texture oh, of brains kind of like. Huh. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Like, that does make sense. That's interesting. I uh, I don't know. I think I don't mind that taste or that texture. I do like when it's a little bit of meat. I like a little bit of meat with a with a with a lot of fat on it. Like that's yeah, that, that tastes good. Like like a um like a pork chop or something like not a pork chop. Like, pork chops are or like or like pig belly or pork belly or whatever. Oh, so good. Yeah, so good. So like them. Yeah, like I'm such a I'm such a like. Carnivore, bro. I love, I love just anything meat. Like I love it so much. Like that's like I, my I love thing. meat, but I never buy it because I'm, I'm like, because it's mad expensive. Yeah, I was gonna say I have like this. A lot of people in my family have. I kind of have like a spending. Like I just like don't spend money. Really. Oh, really? Weird, I, I, I'm, I guess I'm like a miser, and that's like one of the things I don't really buy meat much. Or if I do, yeah. I buy like a whole chicken and break it down, or I buy right, pork. Right. I buy like the cheap stuff. Or I just, just 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 buy like a small piglet and just but raise it to an adult. Really problem because at my work, like every day they make like family for us, or like oh. we make it, and um, they make what. Him. That's like what they call the meal for all the employees. Oh, nice! That's cool. And uh, we have beef like all the time because yeah. we have it on the menu, so we always have scraps. Absolutely. And then just like using up the okay, that's nice leftover stuff. Yeah, I don't know what it is with me, but I I uh I'll save mad money and then I'll just suddenly just be like I'm gonna spend this <laughs> and I'll spend mad shit. Like and I I think a lot of it is just like especially when people are visiting. Like now, last yesterday I had people visiting oh, i spend money when i'm with other people a lot yeah, more exactly and so i just automatically i'm the one who's just like oh I'm, i'll cover the trip so and then either sometimes people pay me back but I don't. and then um yeah and then i was also buying a bunch of stuff for my like my job so then i just yeah if you go in my room it's just literally just stacked with animals. what do like, you need for your monitors job and stuff um they gave us like for office stuff so like Oh, did money. they give you money for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no. So I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting a new desk. I don't know when it's coming, but it's, I think it should be like. It's funny because like I have to buy stuff for my work, like knives and stuff. And you have to buy it. Yeah, yeah I have to buy That's it. So but crazy. then 
but then my cork is like, oh, you just write it all as a, a write off. I was like, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> but you can still do it. Low but key. it's funny, like, how many jobs can you just write yeah, uh, a knife as your as your tax write off? Right. It's so it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy what like write offs in America. Like, it's so wild. Like, I think one of the was that like a co- one company like acquired another company and then they just closed the company down and wrote it off on their taxes as like a purchase. Of Dang. like thirty million dollars or fifty million dollars, it's like, bro, that's like such a that existential. Would suck as the as an employee yeah. of this company. Like, oh, you're just a write off, my guy. Like, excuse me. And so, like, yeah, because it's like, especially when like a um, I'm to... with like a finance, like a like a financial, like a financial company that like fi- like uh, I don't know, it is companies that like finance and stuff uh-huh. like that. And so, like, yeah, they'll just do the math and be like, yeah, this is actually cheaper, like better for our company. If- this up. that's crazy crazy yeah i was gonna say i part of the reason why i'm sending you that is i'm trying to like save up to buy a house and yeah. like put a down payment because i was gonna say if you buy a house you can write the house off as a write-off if you oh. like are using it as like for work and stuff is your if you're like renting it out to people oh i see oh I think, damn i didn't know that yeah i don't know that's pretty cool yeah i mean <laughs> yeah i don't know i've been also i've been thinking about saving up for like a house but i'm also like thinking about like honestly honestly it would probably be a good idea but i'm just like i don't know where the where i want to be that's the thing like i'm that's, not sure that's so true it's, especially for me who's like a lot of like everything i do is like remote so it's like you i could be here be i could literally just decide i'm gonna live in in hong kong and just dude honestly hong kong. living out of the moving out of the u.s might be the move just because it'd be so much cheaper living in like any other country yeah literally like, even in places where you're like, oh, no, it's, like, even in Europe where it can be more expensive, it's, like, bro, you can, like, there's a lot of ways to figure out. Like, even when I lived in, like, the most expensive place, Switzerland, it was, like, you can always figure out how to get all the food you want for a good price. Because we were broke as hell. Like, we were, we had no money. And we still, like, we're, able, we're good. It's, like, okay. I think it it's the difficult part is, yeah, is owning property. Like, if I if you rented an apartment in what's in Geneva or something. Yeah, but I mean Especially that's Switzerland out- too. Like. Yeah, but it's like it's still not that. It's like it's 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 like you can still figure it out. Like yeah, there's still sure. people. Just yeah, you're de- you're definitely I not gonna have like a like, three Europe story has house. Has a lot less like owning, and it's more a lot more people rent. Right, because it's also there. also it's because rent is like pretty well. It's like well regulated and controlled. Like it's not here where like people buy pro- rental properties and then like hold them like their um like their investments and so when that's the case say okay how do we when something's an investment say okay i need to figure out what my return will be and to get my return up we have to raise rent so i can keep my you know my my numbers going up and whatever you know mm-hmm. and so that's something they do in the u.s a lot and so people just get like evicted out of their apartments because their rent just keeps but in like europe there's a lot even in especially in like in the netherlands there's a lot of like um government controlled rent even for people who are like well off, like the dude. I don't know if I'd want government controlled rent though. Really? Why? I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I it'd be cheaper. I feel like there's it'd be better to just make rent cheap. Like there's other ways to make it cheap than just having the government like regulate it. You know? But okay. I feel like that could also just create more problems. I don't know. Really? I mean, I don't know. I don't really think so. I mean, my my perspective is is essentially because like my thing is that when you there's certain things when you leave them alone people figure out how to make mad money off of it. And I feel like housing is, like, a thing that everybody needs, but, like, people, like, um, people buy housing to then basically exploit people, try to make mad money yeah, but off I feel it. like there's other, there's other, there's, like, reasons. If you, like, stop the reasons for people doing that in the first place, like, yeah, like, there's other ways to make it cheap, like zoning laws, for instance, make a lot of housing more expensive than it really needs to be at all okay. and stuff like that. I don't know. OK, no, I see so I'm that. saying there's like other ways to cheapen it other than like then like being the like, government being like, you can't you, make it. You have to set That's the fair. price and like, like this. I mean, and it's like OK, so then I could see that, especially if it's like, OK, if you're leaving it privately owned and then making people be like, no, you can't make it more. Expensive. You know what I'm saying? Like, whereas, like, the difference between, like, yeah, basically limiting people who own property from setting a fair price versus, like, the government just being like, okay, we're going to build our own price. 
Yeah. Would that like is that? Wait. So you're saying? Wait. Wait. So it's like the question. If if the if the situation was that the government just built new housing and then set the price, that okay? No, I mean I wouldn't be for that just because I feel like the government is just like inefficient with money. You know, like if yeah. you've ever like learned like I don't know like like any time the government builds something, it always costs and takes a lot more time than it would for like. Private. some private person or company yeah. to do it so like that's that's my big thing reason why i wouldn't yeah. want that but i i mean it's like i don't have any like studies to pull up but like i mean it's like that's not even the point <laughs> i think i mean my thing is that um it's like a weird circumstance because i feel like a lot of times like like some of the the way these institutions like run especially things like the irs or the postal service a lot of the reason that they're inefficient is because of like intentional like either like like divesting or like money being taken away from them like from like a budgetary standpoint well i mean if that got fixed then maybe i would consider it but i would say fix that first like yeah don't get me wrong like i think that the reason a lot of these things are functional is that like so a a lot of european countries have much more effective government than the united states does which is kind of like the problem in the first place because like for me i think that like um as far as what g- the purpose of government is to protect the citizens from like private interests because like I-, I agree that like there's many times when like you know you get like you have like these like things where it'll be like a dom like domino's pizza has like <laughs> you'll see like a pothole that's been filled in it'll have like a domino's logo on it and like for some reason like, yeah the government didn't want to yeah the government it, wouldn't the do it so domino's, then domino's like... pizza was like all right we got you and like that's some like weird like technocratic like um future, but um but at the same time it's like yeah, but when you go when you live in a country and like you'd get that like if you were in Europe, is that you see that like okay the government can actually do things like there's a way for the government not to suck, and like I think that yeah I agree that like um in the U.S. it's like the gov- the way that the government works is very apparently like either it's just it just sucks or you can see where it seems like are like i don't know politicians and whatever are just working against money. us yeah like they're like either they're they're just working for whoever has the most lobbying money or they're just like doing things that you're like bro like can you just like pass the smallest bill that will help us they don't, yeah yeah and so like and the, that's it just doesn't ter- like there's a lot of places in europe where it doesn't work like that and so you get policies that are that are impact like that are affected in ways that are like useful being able to not because it's like i think because for me it's like in the u.s it's like something like housing rent prices are just insane and then if rent prices are insane in a lot of places um it's it tends to be because like corporations are purchasing large amounts of rental especially in like boston you see this company yeah, you see nowadays you see a lot of like every new place seems to be a giant apartment building. Yeah. You never see housing anymore. And then it's like, like it's like one of my apartments I've stayed at for like three years. Is like the first year it was like owned by like some dude, and then the next year it was taken over by this company that like basically owns all of Alston, Massachusetts. I think part of that also is like, like laws like zoning and historical laws that prevent like, like a lot of laws prevent people doing what they want to their own land. Which is kind of stupid in the first place, that's but like, like it's a lot I easier mean, for a company to do that. So that's, that's part yeah, of the reason why it out happens. Really, you know, is like a company will do it, and then like I, I, I don't, I can't do that shit. But right, and yeah, and I but, yeah, yeah. I guess in the la- I mean, the last thing is just like the problem is is that like if it was just like something that people like, oh, I don't really need it. Like I, yeah, I'm just I not gonna buy it. It's like, like because it's essential. It's like damn, people just have to get cooked. Like they just have to get fucked over. And, like, that's, that's the part where, like, damn, bro, like, this is, like, a perfect situation where the government could do something of value that, yeah, it doesn't have to necessarily be, like, you cannot charge more than this, but at least some sort of analysis on what is actually reasonable to charge in this market. It, because, like, it just seems like rent is just, like, a, there is no limit to how high that it can go. So people are just getting, like, $300 But at the same year. time, if, if someone, like, charges really high... Like, like I there can't. is definitely a cap. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pay a certain amount, yeah. you know. But then the thing is, and there's places where, like, yeah, they just leave apartments empty because it's like now it's an investment thing. So there's like a leverage 
um, and yeah, there's like an like investment a thing, uh, yeah. Uh, billionaires, and so, bro. Yeah, and so it's like this concept where even if nobody can afford it, it's like now we're we're caught we're using it to in, as a property for investment. So we can set prices on it and then use those prices in other places to either you know secure um, loans or other things. You know what I'm saying? And then and then now we're using it for for finances, which is you know that's why everything gets fucked because. You start everything becomes a like a, a security or whatever, and then the economy has no foundation, and then everything drops out. You know, so that's like how the housing crisis happened the first time in two thousand eight. I mean, know? maybe you could like, if you have like really expensive properties, you could like decentivize leaving a property empty. That might be a smarter way to do that. Like, yeah, tax people more, I guess. But, yeah. Like, Having a really yeah, expensive or, property, or even really yeah, like exactly, like punish, like, like some, some sort of like punish for like you're setting prices outside of the range. Then, and then what happens if you're like just a simple landowner with like one or two buildings and you just can't find anyone because? Well, then, I think it's your It's like a supply, yeah, it's a supply it's demand like, issue now. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, because at the end of the day, like yeah, it's like if it's just like food or coffee, it's like okay, if I don't want it, I don't have to get it, but. I think that this is one of those things where it's like this value in the government being like, yo, we'd love for everyone to have a house. And like short of, yeah, us just like repossessing all the property and then redistributing, which is I think that's not a good thing to do. It's like you have to be like, yo, let's work together. Like, yeah, we get that you need to make money, but like there are human beings who need to live in places, you know? So like anyway, that's my little my little thing. On yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, so, there's a lot going on. It's a complicated so. issue. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst other things. But all right, all right, bro. It's 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 been good. Do you have any do you have any uh, any other things that you you'd like to you'd like to share with us or, or or talk about? Plug. Uh, I want to start an ice cream brand, bro. Yeah. Wait, I mean, we, yeah. We, wait, wait, wait. Give me give me the quick a quick lowdown on the ice cream brand. Yeah, I've been coming up with that for a while. I have like, I have a name. I have flavors. I have, I have flavors, flavors written down. I have like an idea for a logo. I, I have someone I want to. I want make to make it. a logo for me. I just haven't like, at re- like I haven't. Well, I've, I've talked to him about it, but I haven't like actually like been like I'll pull the trigger on this. Right, right, right. Um, huh. What? What? Are you, interesting. Have you made any of the flavors? Like, yeah, just in I your. A couple. Uh, oh, a lot, that's, that's pretty sick. I have them written down. Uh, the, the recipes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I made baklava. Thai tea, root beer. Oh, oh like I that. see. That's that's cool. Yeah. So then you want to make them and like package them and sell them. Yeah, I want to do wholesale stuff. Okay, to, to like to like distributors, like grocery yeah, stores. Yeah, but start out with like farmers markets and stuff like right. that. Something. Small, start small. Get into it. Okay. Is, it would be sick to do like. Oh, this is Caleb. Oh, put the mic close to your sorry, dog. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank uh, you. it would be cool to do like. Um, like a store or something, but people yeah. don't like understand. Like, it's so much more expensive, and also an actual ice cream store. Yeah, it's so much more expensive, and also food businesses is like the lowest profit margin business you can you right, can run right, right. basically. Yeah. So yeah, it's like uh, why, it's high why is, risk, very high risk. Why are the margin? I mean, I guess it's just how low can you make food that people are willing to pay for? You're just shit? unless you're. He said, thank you. you. (laughs) We got you. Thank you, bro. (laughs) Unless you're like, uh, yeah, unless you're like, unless you're like scamming people, I guess. Not scamming, but like, like, it's very rare that someone's making tons of money. Right. Yeah. Unless the prices are wild. Most like businesses are like are making are like low profit margins interesting but like some things like alcohol has high profit margins compared to food yeah. so I, like also like coffee right coffee, coffee does super too. high yeah profit way more than food does yeah, it's like wild it's like a wild i think food is just high labor and high cost, cost. to put into it for not yeah. that much of a payout which i guess is why okay oh i have a good question for you actually so what do you what do you think about tips bro? okay i I'm fine with tips, but I think I think the problem in the US mainly is like of a culture problem. Okay. 
Like, people don't understand. As much as jo- what Josh was spieling earlier, like, I I like Josh and I agree with him. But <laughs> like, some of his stuff he says is just, like, total elitist, I feel like. <laughs> Dang. No, no, no right not, now, not a diss yeah. to, like, what his opinions I'm or anything. So dead. But, uh, anyways, yeah. So, what I was going to say is, like, people, like, like, and you, you've probably noticed this in Europe, is food mm-hmm. is just more expensive yeah but the people are getting paid yeah, better put into it yeah yeah, yeah yeah and that that just kind of right, people right, just right. need to it, which need i to. think honestly might honestly kind of be happening right now in the u.s is, is that it, we're already moving, moving in that direction it? i mean because it, it makes sense it makes because sense because ever since covid happened everyone was like okay wait wait why am i even working here yeah. i don't need to work here for so low wage. wage part of it too is unemployment is payout is really high right now so people oh, can make more on unemployment just, than, than working funny. which is kind of a problem but also kind of not a problem if, like, you, if it's helping it's, it's them. like maybe like an idealistic problem like oh they're not working but it's like my brother i'm just getting paid and i'm playing <laughs> video games hello yeah so maybe we will get to a point where uh Right. Hopefully, I think we are moving. Like, I don't know if you know, we're yeah. in the lowest. Um, yep. No, I was going to say it's oh. the lowest amount of, like, worker, restaurant workers, essentially, that the country's oh, yeah. ever had. Dang, I didn't know that. That's yeah. interesting. It's a, a huge um, shortage. Right, right. Interesting. I think it might have gone up, but it's still really low. Right, yeah. So, like, a lot of restaurants, like, even, like, before COVID, so many restaurants had no benefits. Like, literally just oh, pay. Started... No benefits. And now, like, almost every restaurant has paid good. time off. That's sick like, time and, stuff like that and like yeah and like well, i want to say something also I was, to the guy saying where josh go he had to he had to go home right oh yeah, yeah i forgot yeah yeah <laughs> but uh he, yeah but uh don't worry his part will be on the the youtube channel um later um but i was gonna say on like my thing with tipping right is that i get that people make you work in a mad nice restaurant or like uh you know, like a nice establishment, you make crazy money on tips because people will come in and buy something for twenty dollars and then be like, Oh, here's five hundred dollars or something. But like the problem is that overall the like your the what you get as an employee is just so much less because it's like your life is basically you're you you're not being protected by your employer. You have to suck up to the customer and then like you don't get to you yeah, you you have to tailor yourself to the customer service and then the customer gets to do this weird like how good was your service was it good enough for 25 percent? well i think part of the reason why tipping exists is to incentivize good service yeah essentially because like i mean yeah sure if you were getting paid well you probably work good anyways because you'd want to do your right. job well and you're at a good business where they're if they're, they're paying you well at the business and they have high prices it means the food but is you good. can notice like a difference in tips between better and worse workers even better and slightly less right. better workers so it does it does kind of work in that sense that it does incentivize people well but um at the same time kind of i think it, it would be My cooler opinion. it would be cooler like it's kind of odd that I mean the the reason why front of house workers that just means like servers and stuff get tipped yeah, is because yeah. they're dealing with customers. Right. I think it'd be cool if, if more back of house workers got got, tip. got tipped out. I always thought like everyone splits the tip because also like in some it's not in every place, but I've definitely been to a lot of places or worked at some places, and you'll be like, damn, this person's making way more than me, and I know for a fact they're not working as hard as me. I am. Right. Right. You're so it doesn't back. happen all the time, but it does happen, and like right. it's just just stupid it's like frustrating yeah exactly because it's like yeah i mean because it's like the whole the whole industry is kind of centered around like yeah customer service but then like yeah because I, I always thought like yeah like the people split the tips with everybody in the back that's not that's not how that works no yeah. <laughs> not at most places my sure work gets i think we get like maybe even two if it's like on a card or something of all the tips okay damn no, oh. most places the servers will get almost all the tips, and then the bar backs and the bus boys will probably get a payout, and the hosts might get another payout. So, do you guys also make like minimum wage, like they do? Uh, I I don't know what the minimum, not minimum no, wage. No, okay, but tipped like, workers make a lower than lower than that standard minimum wage. Got you, got but you, they got have you. to if they weren't to make enough minimum wage, then they then the employer has to right. cover the costs. Yeah. And so, yeah, so anyway, for me, you know, maybe I'm just angry. And I usually, I mean, I just, I give 20%. And a lot of times I do, like, ridiculous things. Like, when I get a coffee, I'll just put the same price as the coffee again. <laughs> That's sick. Like a fucking 100% tip. But, like, 
But like, yeah, no, when you're in Europe, bro, and you're looking like, I just remember the first day I, I was in Switzerland and we got like, we went to like a pizzeria and then we wanted to, the dude, like, I don't know what we said, something about like, oh yeah, oh, we can't even put a tip or something like that. He's like, no, we don't do tip here because we actually pay our workers. And I was like, damn. And like, I, I think that there's like a lot of value in like people like, Cause like yeah, there's like super high earners who be like, no, we like tips the way it is, but then it's like on the other end you have people who are like, who who are like, I feel like they have to push themselves. A I lot feel like even that. if even if you wanted like people to actually get paid, it wouldn't just have to be like a law thing. It would have to be a a, a culture change. Shift, yeah. Like it's just kind of the culture of the yeah. U.S. to tip. yeah, what to, to have this weird to not to tip, but have a like. like for a long time in the U.S., like working in a restaurant was never considered a real job, and still kind of isn't right. to this day. Like people, people are just like, oh, like, "Oh, are you, you gonna, working in a restaurant? When are you next? getting uh, a real job? When are you getting a real job?" And it's like, okay, it's yeah. a job, <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> but like, like, what do you do? With your yeah, time? so interesting. In like a lot of other countries, it is a career. Like people right. are like, "I'm yeah. in, in Australia." People go like in the U.S. It's not really a, a a reason to go to cooking culinary school yeah. i mean you'll learn stuff but like yeah. it doesn't yeah, make true. a difference to your pay it doesn't it doesn't really impact much other than maybe meeting people unless you're trying to go to like manhattan or something but like in like australia country. which i don't think it should switch to this level you literally need to get like certifications to oh, be for a real? Cook. you need to like pass much. exams like they're, they're going too crazy which is like kind of crazy but at the same time they get paid a lot right more they're making money like that. And like it's like even in France, like I like met it's some. A, it's a they consider it a real job. I should, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Right. Yeah. Saying? No, I said in Paris, I met like a dude. Oh my guy, shout out to Guillaume. Uh, Guillaume. Yeah, bro. He was like, I think he either was working. I think he just had quit working at like a either a five star restaurant or a Michelin star restaurant to to start his own restaurant. It's pretty crazy. Um, and like, yeah, he was he went to like, I think he went to like yeah a culinary school as well. And, like, I think it's it's cool because in, like, other places as well, like, in Japan, the food culture is so, like, it's all, like, they treat food like someone would treat, like, martial arts. Where, like, it's like, yeah, bro. Like, there's a dude who either had a sushi place or something like that. And where all he did, or what was it? It was, like, maybe a ramen place where, like, all the, that, like, some dude was, like, 75, had his ramen shop he's had since he was, like, 20. That's like- and, like, he had, like, a son who's, like, 60. And then the son was like, yeah, like the first 20 years I, I worked with my days, dad. I think. Yeah, like the first 20 years I worked with my dad, all I did was was just cook the noodles. He and wouldn't let me do anything. Dying, and his dad told him that. Yeah, like, because yeah. Yeah, it was like he, he wasn't, he's like, no, you're not ready to take over the business. But like, but he's so he's like trying to like catch up because he just has to because his dad doesn't care. It's like you have either you're good enough or you don't even. That's do That's like Japan. They just like take every they they so take shit serious. so seriously. And it's like I I love that because it's like it's like almost like its own art of its no, own. No, but dude, Japan. Well, if you want to be a cook in Japan, they have this weird like school thing. I don't know what the word is. It would be yeah. like our equivalent of cooking school. Yeah. And you don't get paid for it. Damn. And you work six or seven days a week. Damn, so what do you do? And you work from, yeah, but you have a whole other you job. Work, you work like uh, you... fifteen hours a day or something like that. Jesus. It's literally slavery, basically. Yeah, but so then what do you and do? You do that for like two years, I think. So like you just have to be super young that your parents are taking care of you or something. What? They no have... no no, you like the you way you have works... a other job too. No, no 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 no. You don't get paid, you like go it's like it's like Oh, you live there and shit. Yeah, it's like a sensei. Oh, okay. You like go and live okay. with the master. Okay. And work with the master, but you don't get paid, okay. and you're working all day. Okay, so that's like almost, it's like basically like a super insane, like, and like also, boarding school type shit. Yeah, and also the, the like, from what I've heard, I'm pretty sure the conditions are awful. Like, you're just, yeah, I don't doubt you're it. You're just sleeping on a, a wooden yeah, yeah. floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, probably on like the, the classic mat. You're just like, damn, at least I'll be a good chef. And then, like, you get like arthritis in your hands, and you never have to, you can't cook ever again. No, but interesting. Okay. Okay, so, okay, just to close it out. So, this ice cream thing that you're doing. So, like, what is, so you're going to just make it, like, at your house and then just sell it and then just try to sell it? Yeah, or... either that or I'm going to, um, depending on how big it is, like, I'm, I'm definitely going to do that to start. I'm going to, um, there's two other options I could do. One yeah. is to go to a, uh, 
I don't remember what they're called, but it's basically like a commercial kitchen that you rent out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that would be the other one, and then the third one, or yeah, third <laughs> option would be to um go to like a production facility, right? And, and then um, instruct them. On or yeah, you... I don't remember what the word's called, but this is like super common, especially with small businesses. Is you just you find like a company or a, a production company that makes ice cream? Or whatever, oh yeah, yeah. And you give them things. all your recipes, teach them how Didn't, to do like, it. Didn't like Mr. Then, Beast do this with like? He probably did. With, like, yeah. Like, like, and then you have them do it for right, you, right, right, right. Okay. but it's your product. The Beast Burger. Yeah. Um, but have you ever heard? Okay, this is kind of another aside. But right, have you ever I'm heard of, of ghost kitchens? Like those things where like a restaurant will just. There'll be like ten different like restaurants on like Uber Eats or DoorDash or something, oh. and then all the foods being made in one spot. Yeah, or like I think like KFC will like list themselves as, as like, like another restaurant, as another yeah. restaurant and stuff like that. <laughs> like why? Dude, that's that's <laughs> weird. It's like the it's like it's like this weird like just corporate takeover of everything of value. Like damn, bro. Like yeah, it's crazy. So like I just saw a YouTube video of some dude who like he ordered like four different chicken sandwiches and they're just the same sandwich, but. They all came from one address, and then you go to the address, and there's just nothing there. Like, what is this? Where's the food coming from? Like, what's going on here? Right. It's like the <laughs> weirdest thing, bro. It's it's really interesting. But um, I yeah, know. I feel like that's another thing about like current food, the food stuff is that like a lot of businesses like optimize themselves for like DoorDash and like Uber Eats and that experience, especially in the, the city. DoorDash. I hate DoorDash. Yeah. I don't I hate DoorDash. Like, I mean, it's fine as a business, but I mean, like. When you're working in a restaurant and you have right. DoorDash, it just like totally messes up. It depending on the experience. restaurant, but like unless, like, unless the it's restaurant like a is like whole made for another it, yeah. deal, you have to work, you have to deal with. Whereas if yeah. it didn't exist, you wouldn't have to think you could about just it. Do something super simple like people come and pick up food or they sit down. But now you have this whole, where's my driver? Okay, the dude's here. Okay, which order is yours? Like this whole, it's whole another system you have to deal with. Yeah. But I don't usually have to deal with that. Usually, right, it's more yeah. front of house. Yeah, like, they have to handle. Do they do DoorDash from the restaurant? No, no, yeah, we don't do any apps know. like that. You, we use Resi for you, reservations, you, but that's different. Word. What do you what, like, um, bro? <laughs> this doesn't really matter that much. But like, I got like a res. I was trying to get a reservation at like a restaurant like like two weeks ago, and they were like, "Yeah, well, yeah, we can do the reservation, but it's just everyone needs to spend at least sixty dollars." And I was like, damn, bro. <laughs> like, before, like, taxes and shit. Wait, before you made the reservation or after you made the reservation? Well, before, it's just, like, everyone had a minimum spending, like... Per person? Yeah. Dang. Well, I know, I know uh, a lot of businesses don't like how people are, like, will, like, get, like, four reservations and then cancel uh, one yeah. last minute. That's so they'll, like, charge people right. for the reservation. Before, beforehand. That's but true. I guess that's a little different. Yeah, that was wild. That. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe it was because we wanted to, we had, like, 11 people. Or some people, like, like uh, it, you give your credit card. I think this is the way yeah. I, we, I don't know if our business does this, but we're maybe proposing it. You, like, give your credit card, and if you don't show up, it charges you, like, uh, oh, a certain amount. Wow. I mean, But you're I still losing money because... Like yeah, yeah, if you were to get a table, you'd probably make like two hundred, four hundred bucks. Right. Whereas, it depends on the amount, obviously. But it might Whereas be if you're getting canceled, or... you're getting twenty five bucks. So you're still losing money. But it's just to try to incentivize yeah. them to actually show up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Yeah, because yeah, people will just do that because they don't know which. My mom does. That. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's been called out. <laughs> Bad on you. But um, no. I mean, yeah. It's it's I guess all these industries is honestly just different forces competing with against each other and all that. But um word. But yeah, I mean it's it's been good. I I think uh, I think we can we can cut this it is here. Fun. Yeah. This is good. Hopefully, you know, we'll we'll do another dual stream. You can follow my guy on Twitch at uh what was it again? Or on YouTube? Sh it? Uh Twitch. On Twitch. Is chef with two Fs underscore bigs. Chef Bigs. With two G's. Chef underscore bigs. So chef underscore two underscores? No, just one. Okay, one underscore. Sorry. <laughs> chef one underscore bigs. Awesome. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you for being here, bro. Appreciate Thank you. It.